Hey, hope you're having a great evening. My name is Nicholas. If you don't know who I am, welcome to another live stream Q&A. If you want to join this evening, uh, the voice call in, then you can find the, the, the instructions down in the description below on YouTube, Facebook. That's where you'll find the instructions. Uh, I think there's a link that you can click down there as well. Great to have everyone over on YouTube. Cody, Aaron, Jesus, Sherry, Spartan, Breaker. God bless you all. There we go. We got Robbie over on Facebook. Torch. Oh, nice. Out in the forest hunting hogs. Sounds like fun. Mom, love you too. Regan, Timmy, Steven. Let me know where y'all are watching from. Gilberto from California. Lance from Georgia. Breaker Channel. Ooh, can't pronounce that one. Vioski Boy from Finland. New York City. Chicago, Connecticut, Indiana, Florida, Polly. Lego Show TV, Kentucky, Acer, Oregon, Crusade Guy from Italy, South Carolina, England, Missouri, Tennessee, Argentina. Praise God forever. People from all over the world joining together in His name. Hallelujah. Austria, almost said Australia, but Austria. Hallelujah. New Jersey. Man, Lord, send us all out into our cities to make your name known in Jesus' name. All these different cities, God, send us out in Jesus' name. Abigail, what's going on? Nora, if you can hear me. Heather from Michigan. All right, good stuff. Well, I'm going to go ahead and pray. If you guys haven't joined these before, like I said, this is a live stream. Uh, this is all live, obviously, because I'm talking to you in the comments. Um, but it's a video call in. So uh, we're going to be taking calls. It's through Discord. Uh, you'll find, like I said, you'll find all of the instructions. This is for people who are just joining. You'll find the instructions on how to join and call in. Um, down in the description below. The Lord willing, we're going to try to move quick tonight and get a lot of people in. All right, I'm going to go ahead and pray, and we're going to go ahead and get started. Father, we love you. God, we honor you. We lift your name high. Lord, help us to know of your amazing love. You said that you first loved us. So Lord, I pray that you would reveal your love even in a whole new way this evening when it comes to our understanding, Lord. It's not new to you, but Lord, open up our understanding that we'd understand it in a whole new way this evening, even looking at what Jesus has done for us. God, speak all that you desire to. Do all that you desire to. We love you. We worship you in Jesus' name. We thank you in advance for all you do for us and all you're about to do in Jesus' name. Amen. Hey Amen. All right, we're going to go ahead and pull in the first caller here. Hey, Lorenzo, you have to unmute your mic and, and re-turn on your video. Hey, what's going on? Hey, how you doing? Doing good, you? Oh. Uh, pretty good, pretty good. Yeah, yeah. Where, where are you? Where are you from? Yeah, from uh, New Jersey. New Jersey. Okay, good stuff. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, what, what question did you have? So I was wondering if um, if um, it, uh, I would say it's like, if it's okay for like women to be pastors or preachers. For women to be pastors or preachers? Yeah. yeah. That's, yeah, a, that's a great question. For, this is a really controversial question, uh, definitely, uh, especially in America. 
Um, but from what I've seen in the scriptures, and I've sought the Lord about it um, quite a few times, honestly, um, and also all the people who are, uh, all the people on both sides, I'll say, uh, I can't say that either. Um, all the people I've seen that are opposite of what I'm about to say, I haven't seen any scripture. I, I hear like kind of a lot of logical, um, a lot of logical reasonings, but I've never seen someone back up what they say with scripture in justifying, uh, I got to be careful with what I say here. A woman can be, I'll say this. I believe a woman can be an apostle, a prophet, evangelist, a pastor, and a teacher. Okay. But I believe that they are not to exercise authority over a man. And when it comes to the gathering of the saints with men in the gathering of the saints, then it says a woman shouldn't speak. And the context of that is in the context of standing up and addressing everyone. Speaking in the context is even like spiritual gifts or a prophecy or something like that. Uh, the Bible says that a woman shouldn't like basically address everyone. It doesn't mean when, they're, when you're at church, women can't say a word. Like they can't even make a peep. Women can't speak in the church. Um, that's not what it's saying, but it's in the context of uh, women preaching to men. Okay, look, this isn't my opinion. This isn't uh, what. This isn't my preference. I'm just. I'm just repeating what I've seen in the scripture. So let's let's look that verse up really quick. Because, like I said, this is super controversial. Um, but I've sought the Lord about it because honestly, I wanted to lean towards the side. So hold on, I'll back up one second. I believe women can preach to women, youth, and below. I believe women can exercise authority over women, youth, and below. But when it comes to men, that's where the line is drawn. Because if you think about it, a mother exercises authority over her children, whether they're boys, and even up until youthhood, before they become a man, uh, a child is to submit to their parents. A child is to submit to their father and to their mother. So a woman can exercise authority, like I said, over a youth who is a male and below into the childhood ages. But when a, a boy crosses over into manhood, a woman should no longer ever exercise authority over a man um, in, in that sense, uh, unless, I will say unless, God appoints someone to a position to where, uh, for instance, Deborah the judge in the Old Testament. Okay, we see uh, prophetesses in the Old Testament, right? There are different prophetesses that we see. It's very clear. They're even doing dances and things like that in the Old Testament. Um, we see Philip the evangelist in the New Testament. It says he has four daughters and they're prophetesses. Um, so if there can be prophetesses, and those are, we've got apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers, why would we rule out, uh, why would we rule out any of the others if we can have women who are prophetesses, right? So again, I believe they can fulfill those offices. I'm not against women preaching the word of God, but when it comes to over men, uh, that's when in the church, specifically in the church, is when we see that. Now, I believe a woman can preach the gospel to an unbeliever, whether he's a man or not. We see that uh, with Jesus and the woman at the well, right? So the woman at the well, this is such an in-depth question, so that's why I'm taking some time for it. We see the woman at the well uh, where Jesus basically gives her words of knowledge about her past, right? He says, uh, you've had five husbands. The guy you're living with right now is not your husband. And then it says she goes back into the village and she tells everyone, come see a man uh, who told me everything I've ever done. Uh, 
could he be right? So she's going out and she's preaching about Jesus and she's even telling all these men, the Bible says, I don't allow a woman to, what was it, speak uh, speak or teach? I think it was. Let's let's pull that verse up really quick. John, you, you got where that's at? Uh, if not, I'll pull it up real quick. Uh, but anyway, the, the, the woman at the well, she goes out and she's specifically telling men all about Jesus, right? So if she's telling them about the Messiah in a way, she's like, teaching them something they haven't heard before. Uh, but I really, if you look at the context of the verse, when it says I don't allow women to speak in church, it's, it's talking about the family of God is what it's talking about. Sorry, hold on. Get, give me just one second. So first off, Philippians 4, 3. Let's, let's look at that one real quick. It's going to come up on the screen in just a second. And I urge you also, true companion, help these women who labored with me in the gospel, with Clement also, and the rest of my fellow workers whose names are in the book of life. So we've got women who are laboring with... Paul is the writer of the Philippian, Philippians. We've got women who are laboring with Paul in the gospel, right? We have many women who traveled around with Jesus. We have women who are supporting Jesus out of their own means. We have women who are serving in the gospel uh, and, and all these things, okay? Um, Matthew twenty seven fifty five. I'm going to run through a few. We're not going to put all these up on it says, many women were there looking on from a distance who had followed Jesus from Galilee while ministering to him. So here again, we've got women who are ministering to Jesus, serving Jesus. Among them was Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James, and Joseph the mother of the son of Zebedee. Okay, Mark says the same thing. Uh, in John 20, let's see what happens with Mary Magdalene. Now, on the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene went to the tomb early while it was still dark and saw that the stone had been taken away from the tomb. Then she ran and came to Simon Peter and to the other disciple whom Jesus loved and said to him, They have taken away the Lord out of the tomb, and we do not know where they laid him. Peter therefore went out and the other disciple and were going to the tomb. So we got Mary Magdalene here. She... Jesus appears to her, uh, or no, 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 not at this point, but later on she appears to him, and then she goes and tells everyone. Uh, but she went to the tomb. It was still dark. She saw the stone had been removed. So she runs back to Simon Peter and the other disciples, and she's telling them something new that they haven't heard before, right? They've taken away the Lord out of the tomb, and we do not know where they've laid him. So then Mary sees the two angels... Now when she had said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there and did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to the woman, Woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you seeking? So it keeps going. Jesus said to her, Do not cling to me, for I have yet ascended to my Father. But go to my brethren and say to them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father and to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene came and told the disciples that she had seen the Lord and that he had spoken these things to her. Okay, so we got Jesus sending Mary Magdalene there to go and tell the, the disciples, Jesus said specifically, go to them and tell them, I am ascending to the Father and your Father and to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene came and told the disciples. So Jesus sends her out to go tell the other disciples what had happened. Yeah, so John 4 says the woman, this is the woman at the well I was just talking about. This one says, The woman then left her water pot, went her way into the city, and said to the men, Come see a man who told me all the things that I ever did. Could this be the Christ? Then they went out of the city and came to him. So there we see her. She's speaking to the men those things. Okay, now let's get into some of these other verses. 1 Timothy 2, 2. Verse 8 through 15 is what it is. 1 Timothy 2, verse 8. It says, I desire therefore that men pray everywhere, lifting up holy hands without wrath and doubting. 
In like manner also that the women adorn themselves in modest apparel, with propriety and moderation, not with braided hair or with golden pearls or costly clothing, but which is proper for women professing godliness with good works. Let a woman learn in silence with all submission, and I do not permit a woman to teach or to have authority over a man, but to be in silence. For Adam was formed first, then Eve, and Adam was not deceived, but the woman being deceived fell into transgression. Nevertheless, she will be saved in childbearing if they continue in faith, love, and holiness, and with self-control. Don't shoot the messenger here. I'm just reading scripture. For all of you guys in the comments, <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just reading scripture to you. He said, I do not permit a woman to teach or to have authority over man, but to be in silence. Now, I've heard a lot of people go into the culture of that time, and women were unlearned. They were asking a bunch of questions, and it was taking a long time in the service uh, and all these things. So he said, hey, look, let the women ask their husbands at home. Let them learn in silence here when we're together. I've heard cultural things like that. Uh, am I myself, am I teaching that? No, no because I don't know that for sure. Uh, I, I don't have that knowledge, and I, I don't know what the source is of that knowledge. I'm just giving you things that I've heard. Um, that could be the truth or could not. You can look into it. Um, you can look into it yourself. So here, here's the other big one right here, 1 Corinthians 14. And this is 34. Both of the writers here, we've got Paul writing to Timothy and then Paul writing to the Corinthian church. So 1 Corinthians 14, verse 34. And he says, let your women keep silent in the churches, for they are not permitted to speak, but they are to be submissive, as the law also says. And if they want to learn something, let them ask their husbands at home, for it is shameful for a woman to speak in church. Or did the word of God come originally from you? Or is it only that it, that it, is it only you that it reached? If anyone thinks himself to be a prophet or spiritual, let him acknowledge that the things which I write to you are the commandments of the Lord. But if anyone is ignorant, let him be ignorant. Therefore, brethren, desire earnestly to prophesy and do not forbid to speak with tongues. So right there in verse 37, I mean, it's, it's hard to wiggle around that. He says, if anyone thinks himself to be a prophet or spiritual, let him acknowledge that the things which I write to you are the commandments of the Lord. Um, again, it's not about my opinion. It's not about my preference. It's not about anyone's opinion or preference. Um, but it's, it's about God and, and what he says. Um, but like I said, this, this doesn't, uh, this does not mean, I'm trying to look for another verse really quick. If you look at, at first Corinthians 14 and the context that's taking place right there, Verse 23, he's talking about speaking with tongues. 24, he's talking about prophesying. So we've got it all in the context, uh, interpretation of tongues. We see a lot of the gifts functioning here uh, in the body. And then we see in the context, uh, then he says, basically let your women keep silent in the churches that they are not permitted to speak, but they're to be submissive as the law also says. So take that in context, and we've got uh, speaking in the sense of what it's talking about, speaking in tongues, prophecy, interpretation of tongues, all those things. And then he says, these things are the commandments of the Lord, which I write to you. Um, so for me, I would rather err on the side of uh, fearing. No, no, no. I would rather fear God and stick with exactly what's said right here, then, uh, then fear people and then they'll get rebuked by the Lord um, or something like that take place. So within that, uh, we also see, like I said, we've got Deborah, who's a judge in the Old Testament. We've got um, Rahab, who's used. Obviously, there's all kinds of women used in Jesus' ministry and Paul's ministry. He said, the same guy who wrote this, Paul, he's not a woman hater. He said, these are the commandments of the Lord. But the same guy who wrote this was just talking about, help these women who labored with me in the gospel. 
So there were women, he said that in Philippians, there were women actually working with him in furthering the gospel. And we see Jesus sending Mary Magdalene out to tell the other disciples what she had seen and what she had heard. Um, so personally, I believe I'm, I'm really careful if I see a woman preaching or God using someone that there's also uh, the prophetess from the Old Testament um, whom the word of the Lord comes to the king and basically says, go up and fight these people. You're going to win the battle. And, uh, and he's afraid. He doesn't want to do it. So then he says, hey, you come with me. And she told him, if I go with you, all of Israel is going to know that God delivered Israel by the hand of a woman. So she said, basically, are you sure you want me to go? And he said, yes. So then the woman goes with him, and God delivers all of Israel by the hand of a woman who is what? She's a prophetess in the Old Testament, right? So therefore, I see from that that if a man is not willing, then oftentimes God will raise up a woman in a way even to bring a little bit of shame to the man for not trusting in God and not obeying God, and he'll do what he needs to do through a woman. So for instance, and this may be controversial for many out there too, but the gospel is controversial in itself in the sense that there's an offense of the gospel that people get offended at. But there's a woman named Catherine Kuhlman, right? This was quite a few years ago. But uh, God used her mightily in many signs, wonders, and miracles. Um, she preached, traveled the world, all kinds of things. But she herself, she said the Lord spoke to her and said, I tried to raise up seven men to do what I'm doing with you, but all of them said no. So those were Catherine Kuhlman's words, that God tried to do that with seven men, but all of them backed down. So he finally used a woman in a way, like I said, to shame the men for disobedience and for not having faith. So me personally, if a woman is preaching, or if a woman is, God is using a woman mightily in that way, similar to Catherine Kuhlman or some of those people from the past, Maria Woodworth Eder, um, there's a few others. I'm really carefully to speak against it because we, we see it biblically. First off, with that prophetess in Israel, uh, we see a woman judge. And, uh, and like I said, Catherine Kuhlman, she said seven men, but they wouldn't do it, so God used her. Um, so I'm careful to speak out about it if a woman is because it could be the hand of God upon her leading her to do that because, uh, because men wouldn't do what they were supposed to do. So uh, that's kind of my take. I maybe didn't give you a straightforward, summarized answer, um, but I gave a lot of scriptures out there um, so people can come up with uh, their own like slice and dice thing. It's, it's not a very straightforward, it can never happen because we see it happen in scripture, but we do see what's written here um, but anyways, uh, I, I, I'll just leave it at that. What's your thoughts on that? Yeah, I completely agree with everything we just said, you know. Have you seen women who are, um, doing those things? Well, yeah, just like, just that, but also like, I would say, like, is that biblical? Is that really biblical? That was, I was just like thinking about that. Like, yeah. Is that even, yeah, normal, whatever? Yeah. I mean, for, for me, even, a, even from like a natural sense, I think we lost your video. E even from a natural sense, I, I'll just be real. Now, now I'm throwing my opinion in here. Okay. This is, this is not the word of God. I'm just throwing you my experience and opinion. And I'm not saying this does not weigh in with, the word of God or my answer. I'm just telling you an experience that I've had. This may be just me personally. It may be something I need to grow from. But when I see or when there's a woman who's like preaching with authority or speaking with authority or giving a word with authority, uh, like exercising that authority or like giving a charge or saying you need to do this or you need to do that or telling people to do something. Uh, when I see that, 
in the church setting, to me, it feels off. Um, and it almost seems like it gives me the feeling of when I was a kid and my mom was getting on me is the, is the kind of feeling. And I've heard someone else recently say, uh, say a similar thing that, uh, when a woman is preaching with authority or exercising authority or something like that in a church setting, it seems like their, their mom is getting on them or something like that, uh, when, when they were a kid or in their youth. Um, so it, uh, it, it definitely doesn't seem right. And according to the scriptures, it's not right for a woman to exercise authority over a man. Um, so anyway, that's my thoughts. That's the scriptures, a little bit from my experience. Um, so there, there you have it. <laughs> but great, great question, man, because that's a, that's a big topic, especially because... Um, in our culture in America and and all that it's a it's a big it's a big thing because we see it we see it all over the place you know uh, but again you know I'm careful I'm careful to speak about it if it's happening I'm I'll, I'll, I need to seek the Lord first and say all right God I'm not just gonna box this thing in and go ahead and make my judgments or uh, you know I'll seek him about it and say, all right, God, did, did you try to raise up men to do this? And then they wouldn't. So now you're doing it with a woman, you know? Um, so anyway. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 Well, man, I appreciate you, you calling in. Great question. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Where, 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 where do you sit? Which side? It's just not, it's not really a side, but what, what do you, uh, what's your final thoughts? I mean, yeah, I can understand it's a very controversial uh, question. It's just something that I think many Christians are trying to, like, normalize or try to, like, twist scripture around a little bit, you know? Yeah. Now, now that yeah. I've said all that, a lot of people that I've heard, this is what the point I was trying to make earlier, a lot of people that I've heard that try to justify, uh, like, kind of throw these verses out and say women can exercise authority and they can... Uh, they can like preach and speak just like like equivalent to a man uh and that's just like a normal thing everyone that i've heard even people who i respect people um you know who are mighty men of god mighty women of god people i've heard speak about it i've never seen someone bring up scriptures uh that really say what they're saying but they just kind of try to logically kind of weave in and out and try to excuse the scriptures with the culture of that time or something you know something like that so anyway i've sought the lord about it because I, I would it would be easy to just say yeah all women can do everything the men can do in the church you know and they can exercise authority over men and that's the easier route to take uh but I sought the Lord about it, and I feel like over and over again, he points me back, and he says, look, there it is in the scripture, um, like <laughs> commandments of the Lord. But anywho, all right, bro, have a, have a blessed evening. Come on anytime, man. Yeah, thank you. Thank you so yeah, much, yeah. Nicholas, for your yeah, time. Yeah, have a blessed night. Thank you. You too. All right. Controversial question. Let me know what you think in the chat. I'm curious what y'all are saying in the chat right now. Sheila, we, we got a woman said women preaching is not a normal thing to me. It makes me cringe. Maybe that's the word I was looking for earlier. Shekinah Glory, Shekinah Glory Ministries say, can women evangelize in the streets? Can women evangelize in the streets? My answer to that, honestly, would be yes. Can women evangelize in the streets? That's exactly what the woman at the well was doing. I, I, I think there's a difference. Sorry, I, I'll just answer one more, one more question. I think there's a difference between uh, 
like preaching, speaking, gifts of the Spirit, and all that stuff happening in the church, which is, is the context of that, versus a woman going out and an unbeliever, it being an unbeliever, even if he is a man. Uh, I think there's a difference there. All right. How's it going, man? Or, sorry, it's kind of well, dark. I, I can't see. Okay, good. Yeah, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a male. So, hey, how's it going with you? I'm, I'm doing pretty good. Yeah, yeah good, good to hear. Where are you? Uh, have, have you been on here before or no? Uh, I haven't been on your stream, but I just okay. joined the Discord today. Okay, cool. Uh, I've watched almost all your videos by now. Yeah, praise the Lord. Thanks for watching all that. Hallelujah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So, my question was about prayer. Okay. Because that's, like, that's one thing that I really struggle with in my journey. Like, how to pray and how to properly pray. Because I read over the verses on what Jesus said in the Lord's Prayer. Like, the Lord's Prayer is... I've been told by so many different people that it's just a guideline and that it's not exactly what you should say every night. So I want to know what you... Like, how to pray, basically. Like, how you've prayed for all these other people at the Gay Pride events and all these other events. Okay, so 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 you're saying prayer as far as the Lord's Prayer and then prayer, like, praying for people and the connection yeah, between that? Yeah, praying for people and praying for people to be saved, people to be helped, and all that. Yeah, I, I, I think I'm grasping, like, what, what you're saying. Um... But so the Lord's Prayer, that's more of a um, kind of like you and the Lord alone praying, right? And it's more of a, it's a, you can use it, you can pray it just straight through and just make it a, whatever, a 30 second prayer. Or you can begin to expand upon those points. I've talked about it before, kind of on the live stream, but you can take it topically and then for the part that says your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven, you can kind of hang out on that topic for maybe, you know, five minutes, ten minutes, however long you want to, uh, or the Lord leads you to, and you can pray, you know, not my will, but your will be done. Lord, I thank you um, that just as it is in heaven, Lord, I pray that it would happen here on the earth. Lord, just as there's no sickness in heaven, Lord, I thank you that your healing is here on the earth to heal sickness. So you can kind of go into that and pray it for a topic. And then go on to the next part, uh, give us this day our daily bread, and then you can kind of pray on that topic of God providing for you, of meeting needs, things like that, meeting needs of those who are around you, helping you to be a good steward of what He's given you, helping you to love with it, all these things. You can go into prayers topically mm -hmm. on that and then switch. So that's more of a one-on-one -on -one kind of prayer. Uh, but then when it comes to like praying for other people, um, I would say... First off, we don't have to stick to a structure either way. It's not like if you're not praying the Lord's Prayer, you're praying wrong when we're talking to God because we're just talking to Him and making requests to Him. But when we're praying for other people, um, really the best thing to do is follow the lead of the Holy Spirit when, when we're praying for other people. Uh, and even with following the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit oftentimes is going to have us pray along the Scriptures. So if you're not sure what the Holy Spirit's leading, you're not sure what He's doing, then praying Scripture is a wonderful thing. So if, if someone's dealing with depression, praying the Scripture concerning depression. If someone's dealing with fear, praying in a way that uh, the Scripture says, uh, God hasn't given us a spirit of fear, but a power of love and a sound mind. A perfect love casts out fear. You know, things like that. Praying even the same way that Jesus prayed. But there are also prayers of faith where we exercise authority. Uh, like, for instance, Jesus commanding demons to come out. Jesus saying things like be healed or be cleansed or, uh, you know, something like that, receive your sight. There's also like prayers of faith where we already know God's will, so we decree a thing. Uh, and it, in a way, it's a form of prayer in faith, and then God is working with that, and the Holy Spirit will actually make those things happen. So um, there's kind of a difference there between just me and God talking, kind of intimate, secret place time, versus me praying for other people and you know god's here god's here with me um but yeah man i appreciate you calling in is it okay if i also lead ask one more question is it on the same topic oh not really not really man we, no, we've like got a, we, we've got a whole but... bunch of people waiting um 
but but if uh, you you can hang out and if if uh, if you can squeeze back in, you know, uh, then, then then you can ask it then. But just out of respect for the other people, it's better if we just do one. Understand, man. Yeah, yeah. Have a blessed night, bro. Talking to you. God bless you. All right. Great question. All right, about to bring in the next caller. Canine Blue over on YouTube. Is it a sin to play violent video games like Call of Duty and GTA as long as we don't repeat what's in it? Uh, that's borderline, man. Playing, playing like violent games like that. Um, does it have any eternal value? That's, that's the kind of question I would ask in return. Does it have any eternal value? Is it doing anything for the kingdom of God? If not, then it's probably a waste of time. <clears throat> and time is precious. Hey, how's it going? Good. How you doing, Nicholas? I'm doing good. Uh, yeah. It's uh, first time on social media here, so I'm not really used to doing social media. <laughs> okay. Yeah, yeah. It's it's changing so quickly and advancing so quickly. It's hard to keep up with. It is. So um, I don't have too much of a question, but I, I did have a testimony to give. But if, if that's too much time, I can think of one question to ask, but it's it's up to you what you'd like me to say. Yeah, yeah. Uh, if 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 you can make the testimony quick, then we can go with the testimony. I, I'll do my best with the testimony really quick. So um, 13 years of marriage, I was married, and my wife liked to see a lot of men and stuff, and we had a lot of up and downs and whatnot. And um, during that time, we had a little bit of a separation for about maybe a year. And during that year, I went to a, uh, a trail a nature park that I like to go to a lot. And this is after I had lost all my family, my real mom, my real dad, my grandparents, which took care of me in place of my mother and dad, which abandoned me at 17 years old. Um, and then losing my wife, going through this divorce we were going through, wasn't sure. I went to a park and I cried out to God. And I, uh, at the end of my discussion with him, I told him that I surrender. I give up trying in this world. And I don't want you to show your power to me, but I just want you to give me a sign that you're listening to me. Um, at that time, as soon as I had said that, this woman was jogging towards me and this boardwalk that we were on was very long um she got me a couple feet past me and when she took up her headphone and she turned around and she said that guy loves you it's favor for you i cried so hard i've never felt to go life because this was the first time that I surrendered everything, all my sins, everything that I was there at the park for. And um, when I turned around, maybe just a minute later, she was gone. And the uh, the park where she had to have run to to disappear from my sight, she couldn't have gone far that fast. And... I didn't think no coincidences because at that point in time, I believed in no more coincidences. I believe that, you know, God is there. Jesus is real. And that moment right there, it's like he literally came into my life and he took out a heart of my heart that was stone and he gave me a heart of flesh. And for about a year now, a little over that, I've been following Jesus Christ to the best of my knowledge, always in scripture following your videos all the time which i love you're you're amazing by the way i wish i could have that boldness <laughs> um it comes from the holy spirit time, you can yes sir it, it does and i was very confused during these times when i was staying with my wife at the time for seven months during our divorce and this was after my calling of course um a pastor had showed me a verse in Corinthians chapter 7, and I understand why I started I was angry at the magic seeing that we were in a divorce in August 6th. When we got on Corinthians chapter 7, 13 through 15, I don't know who. Hey, sir. It, yep. It, sorry, we're, we're losing you a little bit on, on audio. Uh, 
audio and and video. Um, so I might be my connection. Yeah, I th- I, th- I think it is. But but we heard or I I heard quite a bit. I don't know what everyone else can hear. Um, but but as far as the the testimony, it, that that's absolutely amazing. It it sounded like from what I caught that you were there. Um, you had just prayed that, and then a woman running by turned around and and. God spoke through her. God used her to say, you know, that He loves you, uh, and this and that. And then, boom, she she vanished away. And now you've been you've been serving the Lord. But man, that's super encouraging, um, not only to me but even many many other people out there. So keep sharing that testimony. Um, God is so so amazing and and wonderful, and it's true, man. He He loves you so much, and I, I know that you're. You know that, and uh, and you're growing, and even finding out more of what that means. Um, but man, I, I appreciate you uh, appreciate you coming on and sharing with us. Yes, sir, very much. Thank you for having me, Nicholas. I appreciate Definitely, everything man. that you do. And yeah, yeah. Stay All... strong in the Word, and God bless you, Nicholas. Thanks for the encouragement. All glory to Him. Yeah, yeah. Have a All blessed night, man. Praise God. Yeah, you yeah. You too. Bye bye. See you. Hallelujah. God is so wonderful. That's amazing. I love hearing stories like that. God just revealing himself. Won't he do it? Hello. Hey, how are you? Uh, I'm doing good. Yeah, yeah. Could, could you enable your video uh, for us? Yeah, hold on. Thanks. Okay, hello. Hello. Where, where are you calling in from? I'm calling in from Oregon. Okay, nice. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, what question do you have? Uh, kind of a, kind of a, kind of hard to say. So my brother, uh, he's like, he's two years older than me. Uh, he's atheist, uh, doesn't believe in anything I believe. And basically he's, recently been making fun of me for being Christian and I just I don't know what to do about it because it's been uh it's been really bad recently and so I I just don't know what to do and I just wanted to ask you because I've seen your videos and they're I've just I've been liking them and I assume you have a lot of knowledge so yeah I just I wanted to come by and ask Yeah. Yeah. No, that's an amazing question because honestly, every single one of us, every Christian, like we, we endure that. We, uh, we all get made fun of by people who, who don't understand. Um, and the, the mockery and and everything else. And it's, uh, sorry, I'm trying to look up a verse and talk at the same time. Uh, I think it's in Romans. Hold on, so, sorry, hold on one second. I, I've got a verse that yeah, touches yeah, it fine. on exactly exactly what you're talking about here. Yeah, it's it's fine. I can wait. I don't think it's that verse. Uh, Matthew five forty three first. John, sorry, I'm talking to. There's another verse I'm trying to find. Lord, help me. Okay, so Matthew 5, 43, it says, You have heard that it was said, You shall love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I say, Love your enemies, bless those who curse you, do good to those who hate you, and pray for those who spitefully use you and persecute you, that you may be sons of your Father in heaven, for he makes his son to rise on the evil and on the good and sends rain on the just and on the unjust. For if you love those who love you, what reward have you? Do not even the tax collectors do the same? And if you greet your brethren only, what do you do more than others? Do not even the tax collectors do, do the same. Therefore, you shall be perfect just as your father in heaven is perfect. So right there, he's giving us wisdom on one, how to overcome the evil, but even how to respond and how God even responds to evil men. Uh, and he said, 
love your enemies, bless those who curse you, do good to those who hate you, pray for those who spitefully use you and persecute you. And then he says that you may be sons of your Father in heaven. And then it demonstrates how God makes his sun to shine even on the evil people. So he's even doing good to even the evil people that are in the world by even doing something like making his sun to shine on them. So when you do this, this can be difficult to do on your own, but with the help of the Holy Spirit, he can help you and even produce these things in you. So one of the main things, the Bible says we don't war against flesh and blood, which means we don't war against people. Even though people might war against you, even if it's making fun of you, mocking you, all these things that they're doing to you for Jesus' namesake, uh, we don't war back against them. But the true war is really people against the powers of evil, Satan, all the fallen angels, and the devil's will, which is sin. So the real war is against them, and really God loves each and every person and desires for people who may be doing evil things to come out of the darkness and come to Him. So the real response and the only response that can actually overcome the evil, like you could make, you could find many things to make fun of Him about. You could, uh, I'm sure you could come up with comebacks that would belittle Him and do all these things, right? Like you could go yeah. that route. And maybe you would win in doing more evil to him than he did to you, but that's not the answer because that's just going to tear him down more. That's going to leave him broken. That's going to leave him hurt. That's going to build up bitterness and hatred and all these things inside of him. So really the way you overcome the evil, which is really the evil who's using your brother, who's, who's speaking through your brother, and who's trying to bring those things through your brother, the evil behind him, the way that you help him come out from the evil and stop doing those things is by loving him. When he says something evil towards you, when he's cursing you, bless him. Say something that's kind back. Say something that's nice back. Uh, like I said, loving him, doing good. If he's doing something hateful towards you or doing something that's he's trying to hurt your feelings or harm you or all these things, doing something good. What, h- however that may you know, manifest, however that may come about, you can find something good to do towards him. And, and eventually, one, that's going to get to him. Like, like in the sense of he's going to see Jesus in you. And, and maybe at this point he will turn, you know, turn to God, but maybe it's not until later on in his life. Maybe he never does. I pray that he will. But maybe it's not until later on in his life uh, because here, here's what happens. People who don't believe in God and people who want to keep sinning or people who maybe are skeptical about God, what they'll do is they'll try to basically cause pressure on Christians to see if this thing's real, to see if God is real, to see if Jesus is real, to see if you're really a changed person or if you're just faking it to see if this whole religion thing really is about relationship or if it's just, oh, you got religion and you got a crutch to walk through life with now because it's you're weak and you can't do it on your own, right? So people will try to push buttons. They'll try to push your pressure points. They'll try to push you to your limits so you respond with some kind of hatred or some kind of bitterness or some kind of evil. And when you respond, they now got what they wanted because now they're seeing, or now they're thinking, yeah, see, I knew it was fake all along. I, I, I knew that she wasn't really a Christian. I knew that she's still the same old girl. I knew that, you know what I'm saying? But when they try to push those buttons and cause you to do something evil back and cause you to send hatred back and cause you to respond in a, and curse back at them, when they're doing that, if they don't see that, then in the back of their mind, they're like, uh-oh. <laughs> because it, it, it represents Jesus. And it means, for them, they're like, okay, my sister didn't used to do that. Like, when she was younger and I would do stuff to her, she would respond this way. She would get mad. She'd get angry. She would do this and she would do that. But something's different. And, and that, in the back of their mind, whether they reveal that to you or not, in the back of their mind, they're thinking, huh, And they might try harder. They might push buttons a little bit harder to see if they can get you to curse back, to see if they can get evil to come out of you. 
And when you continually, the Holy Spirit is continually producing love and peace and joy and gentleness and kindness and goodness and patience and self-control, right? When he's producing all these things through you, now it's, a, it's even a testimony. Your actions become a testimony and a witness of Jesus and the Holy Spirit living inside of you. And, and eventually, if, the, if, he ever, if he ever gets in a rough spot and he ever gets to a hits rock bottom or he gets in a place, He's going to remember, and you might even see him in the near future reaching out to you and saying, all right, what's this stuff about Jesus? What's this stuff about Christianity? Um, So just keep on loving on him. Keep on doing good to him. Keep on blessing him. Pray for him. That's one of the biggest things is praying for him. Uh, And just keep representing Jesus and just trust the Holy Spirit that he who's in you is greater than he who's in the world. So no matter how hard your brother pushes you, for something evil to come out, guess what? Evil's not in you anymore because Jesus yeah. washed you and cleansed you. He's given you a new heart, and now the Holy Spirit is producing fruit, beautiful fruits through you, fruits of the Spirit, and uh, and it's gonna be it's gonna be a witness, and you'll actually overcome. The only way to overcome that evil is actually with good. Uh, so yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. thank you. Thanks for calling in. Is that helpful? Yeah, that's really helpful. And I feel like uh, one of the good things that he said was that uh, that he's trying to get evil out of me when I'm not, because he thinks he thinks I hate him because he has this because he's a homosexual. He has this idea. He has this like thought that all Christians hate gay people. So he just he just fights me for that reason. And so yeah, this this was really helpful. Yeah. Praise God. Yeah, yeah. 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 Christians, Jesus, uh, God loves gay people, but he hates the sin that separates gay people from him. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, yeah. So in the same way we love gay people, uh, but we hate the uh-huh. sin that keeps them from God. Um, so anywho, yeah, yeah. yeah. So thanks for calling in. Hope you have a blessed night. Uh, and, and we'll be yeah. praying people in the chat, be praying, um, for this situation. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Yeah. All right, have a, have a blessed night. See you. All right, yeah, see ya. It's nice talking to you. Bye. Hallelujah. All right, pulling in the next caller. Ooh, they dropped out. Breaker, breaker channel praying for you now. Hey Chan, if you could unmute your yeah your mic for us too. There we go. Hey, hey how's it going? Hey, hey, could 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 you mute whatever you're hey, watching Chan, the stream on? Your, yeah, your mic for us too. Just because we can we, we can me? hear every yeah yeah we we can just hear everything twice. Hey, it's going good. How are you? Whatever you're watching the stream yeah, yeah. on. Going good. Hey, can, can you mute? Uh, Dude, you got you, it. Sounds like you got the stream pulled up on a another device. Could you, just, device. could you just? No, nah, I can still hear it. No, nah, I can still hear it. You can hear like a uh, like your stream. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, did, yeah are, you are you watching it? Um, uh, I was watching on YouTube, but I closed the the window. So. Are you closed the window? Okay. Are you closed the window. Okay. Yeah. Hey John, can, can hey, you John, hear two going on right now? Yeah, it's yeah, you're still you're doubling, still doubling Chan. 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 Mm-hmm. So why don't you so put, some put some headphones in, and we'll pull you in that. Uh, here, I got some headphones right here. Sorry. Okay, yeah, let's, okay, yeah, let's plug those in real quick. Real quick. Yeah, sorry about that, guys. Sweet. No, it's, a, it's okay. No, it's a, no a, big deal. No big deal. Is it fixed now? Oh, yeah. Yeah, now it's good. Okay, awesome, man. Appreciate How you it, doing? man. Thank you. Doing good. How are you? Doing good. Uh, I'm coming from Tennessee. Okay, good stuff. Yeah, yeah. Where northern, southern, which city? Uh, Memphis, Tennessee. Memphis. Okay, gotcha. Yeah, yeah. That's that's yeah. not too far. I'm in Bowling Green, Kentucky. So. Oh, nice man. Not too far. Yeah, I didn't yeah. know. That. <laughs> Close by. So we we'll, we'll, uh, we'll, go ahead. Uh, my question is, uh, you know, I've been watching your content, man. It's it's great. I can see you're filled with the Holy Spirit. It's very uh, inspiring. 
Um, and I've watched a couple, a good handful of your videos. And one thing I've noticed is um, specifically your street preaching, the pride parades. Um, you have a really strong degree of like, you know, patience. Like I can see you communicating with these people. You have people like screaming at you, spitting at you, like doing like all kinds of profane, profane stuff. Um, and I watched them like, man, like, I feel like genuinely that God wants to call me to, um, to do some ministry work and to do some preaching and whatnot. And I have a buddy that feels the exact same way. Um, but when I watch your videos, I think to myself, like, if I was in your shoes, like if I tried to do preaching at like a pride parade, they'd probably break me in like five or 10 minutes. So my question is how, well, I, I have two questions, but like, I mean, they're, they're, they go together. Uh, how do you have that degree of patience? Because um, it, it takes a lot. Um, and how did God call you to start doing this ministry that you're doing with your YouTube channel and whatnot? Because it's something that I want to do in the future. Yeah. Um, so first... The Bible says in Galatians 5, it says the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, forbearance or patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Um, so that patience, it really is produced by the Holy Spirit. And and if I could explain it, um, it's almost like, honestly, it's almost like in those moments, <laughs> it sounds funny, but it's like almost like I'm in a bubble like like of peace and patience and love it's like like the holy spirit just truly he who's in us is greater than he who's in the world so even though like all these people are like against me and shouting and bringing up their biggest points of why they don't think you know christianity's real and why they don't think god is real and all the even the a lot of that anger that you see uh is really the hurt in their heart that is like right. just coming out, man. It's like all their hurt and bitterness and even the hypocrisy. Many of them have seen hypocrisy, people who claim to be Christian and uh, and really misrepresented God. You know, they were modern day Pharisees and Sadducees, you know, hurting people and harming people. And, you know, like, like the woman caught uh, in adultery, you know, they're like ready to stone her. And Jesus is like, all right, you know, go. Neither do I condemn you, but go and sin no more, right? So we see this like new kind of love and compassion and mercy uh, demonstrated through Jesus versus some of the hard religious hearts. So people have been like really, really hurt. Um, and a lot of that is just like this anger coming out of them, right? Which obviously demons are involved. There's unclean spirits and stuff like that. But at the same time, for him to be greater in me than he who's in the world, like it's such a supernatural thing in those moments. It's not just like I'm the most patient person in the world. It's not, it's not like that. Like I have kids too. I have a wife. I have, you know, all these things. And there are times where I like lose my patience when I should have been more patient uh, and I'm growing in it. So it's not like in every area of my life I have this like amazing, you know, like perfect patience or anything. But it's like truly just to make ourselves available and to be willing to step in that place uh, and, and allow God to use you to reach some of the hardest people and some of the most angry people and some of the most vile people, you know, uh, as far as their deeds and things like that. God can wash them and cleanse them and all that. But I'm saying as far as their deeds and you see there, cause some of these responses that come. But it's like just the Holy Spirit and just the covering of the Holy Spirit in those moments is like, and it just like, it makes it almost like nothing. Like, like I can look at someone and they can be screaming in my face, but I can literally internally sense the love of God for those people and, and, and realize like these people are in bondage. These people are bound by Satan. Like, yes, they're sinning. And yes, the punishment of sin is death. Uh, and I'm not discounting that, but I'm saying Jesus died to save them. Jesus died for the sins they were committing so they could Amen. come out. And if they'll just like repent and come out and put their trust in Jesus, like 
all that sin will be washed away in a moment. You know what I'm saying? And and they'll be now in God's loving arms, you know, the veil torn. They'll be in his presence. So it's like just to see that and realize like, okay, these people are deceived. First off, they are deceived. They're blinded. Satan has blinded their minds. Um, and they're not my enemy. Even though they see me as their enemy, I'm not your enemy, man. I'm, I'm here warring against who really is your enemy and he's trying to steal kill and destroy and he's trying to drag you to to the pits of hell with him you know what i'm saying so it's like i'm i'm here trying to open your eyes and if i get all mad at you and angry at you because you're treating me badly like that what kind of response is that really you know what i'm saying if if i'm here with that heart you know that the kingdom of god is here and like the Holy Spirit's here ready to set anyone free who really wants to be free and kick kick the devil's butt, you know, kick the demon's butts that are keeping these people bound. Um, it's like truly, man, the, the only way is like love. Um, but I, I will put in there, it's um, as we get to know God more, we get to know how truly patient he is and how truly gentle he is and how kind and how loving he is. So then when we get to know that, then uh, it's, it builds our trust in that, in who he is, his perfect patience. You know, Paul said he demonstrated his perfect patience on me, you know, that even in my ignorance, while Paul was like putting Christians to death, it's like God demonstrated his perfect. So when we start to even know that on like an intimate, personal relationship kind of level, then we can have faith in that same kind of patience to be like produced in and through us. Um, and I, I will say, uh, there's a reason that the Bible says to fast and pray as well, because oftentimes uh, the fasting part of our relationship with God it puts a pressure on our on our flesh uh, that really um, we have to endure through. So when, when you do fast, say you do a three-day water fast, you know what I'm saying? Or uh, you go beyond that, a seven-day or longer, or 21-day or something like that. Um, or even fasting a couple times a week. You kind of learn to, uh, or the Lord teaches you to deny yourself. So it's like, a, even on a three-day water fast, it's like, it gets really crappy. <laughs> like, to be honest, on the third day, you start yeah. feeling weak. You don't feel good. And then you have, you still interact with people, right? I've, I've still got my wife. I still got my kids. I still got people at work. I still got issues that I run into, technical issues with a computer or the internet or, you know, something, I got to fix something in my car. I got something going on. It's like we still have these struggles in life. We still have these things that kind of cause us pressure or suffering. And when you're fasting, especially feeling like that. And then you have to push past what you feel like doing. I don't feel like being kind. I don't feel like being patient. I don't feel like responding nicely. You know, I feel like being frustrated. I feel like being short with people. I feel like, I don't feel like going out and witnessing today because I'm, I've been fasting. I don't have the strength I usually do. I don't feel like going out and talking to someone about Jesus. I don't feel like taking a moment when I'm walking through lows to go over and pray for that person or witness to them because I feel like duty. I just want to get what I need to get and get back to my house and do what I got to do. But when you're fasting, it puts that extra pressure on you. uh, And then you continue to love and you continue to be obedient and you continue to do the Father's will. Uh, That can train you and teach you. So then in moments like that as well, because you've been through kind of an intense pressure already and the Lord is teaching you to love even in those pressure moments and things like that, it can also help you. Because honestly, I would rather have a mob of people screaming in my face than be on the seventh day of a water fast and and feel like weak and like garbage. Right. Honestly, yeah. I would take that. I would take an hour of people screaming at me than than that. So it kind of, that can help prepare you and prepare your heart and kind of get rid of those uh, selfish desires and selfish tendencies. You know, fasting right. really helps us rid us of our, uh, of any impurities that we have in right. our heart. Um, so that, that goes into it as well. 
but that's not apart from the Holy Spirit, and that's not apart from you know all these these things, you know, these supernatural things that God is doing. Um, but yeah, I mean, that, that's what I would say. It's it's mainly, um, I would say it's mainly in the secret place that you get filled with that patience and and just the fruits of the Spirit in the secret place. So then when you go out from there, uh, from the secret place and you get out in the world, you know, we're not in the world, or we're not of the world, but in the world. When you get out there, it's like now you're full of that and like, you know, it's like a river, right? Rivers of living water. It just starts to flow out of you. Um, but it really, all that stuff is kind of birthed and produced and then carried uh, from the secret place. Um, right, of course. You know, just getting in with him. But yeah, yeah. yeah. Man, great, great um, question. Go, go, go ahead. And I wanted to add, um, while, I'm dressed, <laughs> while I'm dressed up and stuff, because I had an interview uh, earlier today for a counselor position at Youth Villages. Um, and, you know, I'm not going to go into the whole story, but God definitely put that opportunity on my path. Um, and I feel like working at Youth Villages, you know, it's a nonprofit for kids from all kinds of broken homes and environments and stuff. Um, I feel like my experience there will definitely push me to be to be more loving um, and for the Holy Spirit with me to grow. Because uh, like you said, or we're talking about the fruits of the Spirit, that's really important for any and all Christians and, you know, what they're trying to accomplish. Um, the Holy Spirit's very powerful and important. So um, I haven't tried fasting. Um, I've I've done fasting before for like weight loss, but I haven't done it. Um, you know, to grow my closeness with God, and challenge myself, like you were saying. So I'll, uh, I'll definitely keep that in mind, and I'm just praying that uh, my time at Youth Villages will really push me and my patience to the limit, um, and will teach me good lessons. Yeah, yeah, that's a that's a <laughs> that's a prayer uh, that's good, but uh, like pr- pushing you to your your limits when patience, but that's truly how you grow. So that's a great mindset and a great, a great heart. Um, um, because truly being pushed to our limits, it's like working out, you know, you push yourself to your limits and, uh, and, and that's how you grow, you know? Yeah. Um, but yeah, man, that's a, that, that's awesome, man. Praise God. Uh, may he do Thank you. Man, beautiful and amazing, uh, things within, uh, that job. But yeah, yeah. Well, have, have a blessed night, man. Thanks for calling in. I've, I've enjoyed yeah, it. You too, man. God yeah. bless you, dude. Keep Thanks, fighting. Thanks, you too. Fight. Amen. Thank you. Hallelujah. Let's see, we got Joseph, Sonom, and Joe. All right, we got someone else coming in. Hello. There we go. We got audio. Hey, how's it going? Good. How are you, man? Doing good. Yeah, yeah. Could, okay. could you ena- enable your video for us, please? Oh, yeah. Sorry. Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah. I can, I can hear you. Okay, cool. Okay, cool. How's, it, how's it going? To, uh, good. It's blessed to talk to you, man. Yeah, yeah. I've, for sure. Uh, Thanks for coming on. I don't want to take up too much time because I didn't actually prepare much. I didn't prepare any verses, but... What I do know is I have a few points and one question to ask you. Okay. Um, the first one is that I've been SDA, or I was born into SDA, and then I kind of left the church, came back in during teenage phases, left it again, but now I'm coming back to the Bible, and you and a few other people have been a really huge influence and allowed me to see the impact of it. And that has allowed me to spread it more to my family. One question I had, which came up, was how valid it is to worry about Ellen G. White's teachings in the SDA church. Is it something that 
is biblical or basically the same as other false prophets because i do know that she has passed a whack ton of tests to be valid and credible but i'm still on the fence about it because i know that one of my family members wanted to be baptized but the pastors one of their first questions was do you believe or do you agree with the teachings of Ellen G. White? And it made me kind of, eh, what about asking, do you agree with the entirety of the Bible? You know, like the Bible should come first and Jesus's teachings, and then maybe side, side quests, you know, or extra ways of, learning about the bible so yeah that is my question like how trustworthy i guess yeah how, how trustworthy is the bible is that what you're saying or how trustworthy how... It, how trustworthy is a denomination that also prioritizes someone more modern such as ellen g white yeah yeah so I uh, I'll give you a few scriptures um but man this is this is such an important topic uh and I, oh, I'm no. so glad I'm so glad that you're bringing it up because it's so 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 prevalent uh in today's age I mean probably in in times before us but I'm becoming more and more aware of um just how much deception there is uh and it's it's warned about all over the all over the bible um even to the point oh man this is a beautiful hold on one second uh, uh, just one other thing to add and it's interesting because at this point i'm not you know completely totally saying hey, I'm done with church or anything. I'm perfectly fine with church. Church is meant to be with like-minded fellows and worship God. But when those certain topics come up and it's like a fundamental belief in a specific denomination, the, the biggest one is since I grew up with it, like, you know? Yeah. So, yeah, yeah. So here, here's a few verses for you. Um... I'll, I'll read these and then kind of like talk about them a little bit. Um, but this one is 2 Timothy 3.16. And it says, right? All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be complete, thoroughly equipped for every good work. Okay, so if we look at this, all Scripture is given by inspiration of God. Okay, so we, we know that. But then if we look at it, and is profitable for, says these things, and then it says that the man of God may be complete, thoroughly equipped for every good work. So that means just with the Scriptures, a man of God may be complete. So that means necessarily we don't need a bunch of other stuff added to the Bible or new revelations that have nothing to do with the Bible. There's nothing else in the scriptures that has anything to do with what these other new revelations from whoever they came from, if they came from an apostle, a prophet, evangelist, a pastor, a teacher, whoever, a priest, archbishop, or, or whatever you want to say, a bishop, we, there's all kinds of different names out there, an elder, and if it came from an angel or a Someone says, this saint appeared to me, this angel appeared to me, Jesus appeared to me, right? If it's not, if it doesn't have a basis in the Bible, if there's no foundation in the Scriptures and it's not even spoken of in Scripture, then if it's out, then that means, I'm going to take you to the next verse now. First, I just want to reemphasize the point. 
a man of God can be complete just with the scriptures. All scriptures given by inspiration of God, right, and is profitable for those things that the man of God may be complete, right? So we can be a complete Christian, have everything we need, know everything we need to know just based on the scriptures. And within that, we have to have the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit has to be giving revelation. He's the one who has to be teaching us. But a bunch of people, they say, well, there's different interpretations of the Bible, right? And, yeah. well, it's been translated this many times and this and all that. Um, but it comes down to the Holy Spirit can give the one interpretation, the exact meaning that God desired when He inspired the Scripture. The Holy Spirit can give the exact meaning so that we're not oh, it could be this, oh, it could be that, oh, it could be this, my opinion, your opinion, everything else. Uh, that, well, that doesn't really fit with culture today, and that's probably wrong. It's like, no, the Holy Spirit is more than able to give us the exact interpretation. So I'm going to run through just a couple more verses really quick. Ephesians 2.20. We'll start in verse 19. Ephesians 2.19. Okay, now therefore you are no longer strangers and foreigners, but fellow citizens with the saints and members of the household of God. So context, we've got household of God, right? Having been built on the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone in whom the whole building being fitted together grows into a holy temple in the Lord, in whom you also are being built together for a dwelling place of God in Christ, in the Spirit, sorry, place of God in the Spirit. So it says the whole household of God, having been built on the foundation of the apostles and prophets, that's including Old Testament as well, Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone. So if anything is not built based on that right there, the prophets, the apostles, and Jesus Christ himself, if you think about the way a building is, they set the cornerstone, then they've got these other, uh, these other parts of the foundation, which the new holy city of Jerusalem, all 12 foundations are the 12 apostles of Christ, right? So then the whole building is built up upon that. So if we got a building that's standing here, and then something else is not based on anything that is here, the doctrine, the teaching of Jesus or the apostles or the prophets. If it's something new and nowhere to be found in the Bible, there's no nothing in the Bible about it, right? Then it's actually built over here and it's another building. It is not truly from Jesus. It's not built on the a foundation and that's a red flag already. If I can't find anything that you're saying in the scriptures, boom, red flag. Okay, we... Some people say, well, God can still give uh, revelation today. Just like he gave them revelation back then, God can give revelation today, and it doesn't have to be based in the scriptures. It doesn't have to have anything in the scriptures. But for me, that's contrary to this scripture right here because it said it's got to be built upon. So yes, it is going to be built up off the foundation, but if it doesn't go down and use the foundation at any point, right? That, 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 that's the main thing here. Because a, a true house, even the rafters and the roof, uh, okay, they're so far away from the foundation, but they're still using the foundation. They're still tied in with every little, there's boards that connect it and nails that hold it together and it goes down and then it eventually it's being, it's, it's supported by the foundation. So if we've got any teachings that are not supported by the foundation and can't be traced back to something in the foundation, in the Bible, in the apostles' doctrine, the prophets, the G Jesus Christ. I know it might seem like I'm emphasizing things, but this is such a prevalent thing that needs to be emphasized. If it's not being supported by the foundation of what we see right here in Ephesians 2, if it's not scriptural, then it like get that thing out of here. It's not part of truly God's wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. It's not part of uh, what we need, right? Because we can be completely complete with the scriptures. And yes, God may have us doing some things, but it's going to be based on, on the foundations. Um, one more verse really quick. 
This is, this is such a serious matter that in Galatians 1, Paul writes, uh, Galatians 1 verse 6, He says, I marvel that you are turning away so soon from him who called you in the grace of Christ to a different gospel, who is not another, for there are some who trouble you and want to pervert the gospel of Christ. So first off, he's talking about a different gospel, and now he's talking about pervert, which is like a perversion, is like a different version, yeah. right? So it's like a twisting or a different version of the gospel of Christ. But even if we, he says, even if we, or an angel from heaven preach any other gospel to you, than what we have preached to you, let him be accursed. As we have said before, so now I say again, if anyone preaches any other gospel to you, then that what you have received, let him be accursed. So he even emphasizes it there, and he even repeats himself as he's saying, as we have said before. So he, then he goes on, for do I now persuade men or God, or do I seek to please men? For if I still please men, I would not be a bond servant of Christ. But I make known to you, brethren, that the gospel which was preached by me is not according to man. For neither I received it from man, nor was I taught it, but it came from revelation of Jesus Christ. For you have heard both of my former conduct in Judaism and how I persecuted the church. So then he goes on. So he even makes the statement, if we even come back to you and we say something different than what we previously said, then like, uh, let us be accursed is basically what he's saying. So he's saying, yeah, if, if, it's, if it's a different version, if it sounds different, if it is different from the gospel that you've already heard from us, then like throw it out. Let it be accursed is like get rid of it, throw this thing out, like don't have anything to do with it basically mm -hmm. um so I, i'm so happy that you brought this up but but i would say I, I don't know personally uh the the thing that you said ellen or something like that and i don't know a lot about uh the sda um but but what i do know is i know there are a lot of um churches out there that that might have the core of the bible like they, mm -hmm. they, they talk about the scriptures, they use the scriptures, but there's some prophet, right? The, the, we've got the Mormons, we've got the Jehovah's Witness, the same thing happened honestly with Islam, right? The Muhammad goes and he gets these like revelations, right? He thought it was a demon and then he was convinced that it was an angel. Uh, yep. Literally, he thought it was a demon at first. So we, we've got it with many different denominations. We've got it with Catholicism. Uh, we've got a lot of different things, SDA. A lot of different things where there's new things where people are accepting it because of a position or a title or or a deceit or they're twisting around scriptures. Now, now here's something we cannot use. Well, I don't think that God would allow us to make error, right? Like like uh, saying He who's in us is greater than He who's in the world. So therefore my church, God wouldn't allow us to ever get off track and make an error, but they find themselves doing a ton of things that are not scriptural, mm -hmm. a ton of things that have no foundation. They're not supported by Jesus nor the apostles. There's nothing in the Bible that justifies what you're doing, the actions you're doing. Now you've got a bunch of traditions of men, commandments of men that you've made that's making this thing of no effect. And that is a very, very dangerous place to be and I would not want to be found in that place. It's so You're so susceptible in that place for people who are doing that. They're so susceptible to deceit because mm -hmm. what can they base their truth off of? What can they base discernment off of? If it has nothing to do with the scriptures, but they're saying, oh, this was a prophet of God. Uh, they saw an angel or an angel told them this. It's like the Bible says the devil comes as an angel of light. Okay, so somebody just, they, they think they saw an angel. Guess what? The devil disguises himself as an angel. He's not going to come to you with pitchfork and horns and say, hey, yo, worship me. I'm the, I'm the true king. You know, he doesn't do that. He comes as if he's an angel of light, as if he's good. 
He'll, he'll say something. He'll use Scripture. Satan will use Scripture but twist it up. That's what he did with Jesus in the desert. He twisted mm-hmm. up Scripture and used it to try to tempt Jesus with it. So even just because someone's using a lot of Scripture doesn't mean, oh, wow, they're really using the Bible. I should listen to what they're saying. It's like, no, 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 hold up. we got to seek the Holy Spirit. We need to get discernment and find out uh, one of the manifestations of the Holy Spirit is discerning of spirits. Like, we, we got to seek God. Is this really true? Is this really what God inspired? Or is, you know, or is Satan twisting up Scripture and trying to get me to jump off a mountain because the angels are going to bear me up lest I dash my foot against a stone? You know what I'm saying? Um, yeah. So we've got to, we've got to, we've got to uh, stick with the doctrine of the apostles, of Jesus Christ being the chief cornerstone, of what the prophets have said of old, all the scriptures that we have. We Everything needs to be built upon these things. And if it's not, then I'm, I'm not in it. I'm not in it. It's, it's too risky. If, if someone is saying something that's not in here, has no foundation, has no roots that goes back into the scriptures, I'm not following that. I'm, I, I don't want to get deceived by the devil be coming as an angel of light. Like, it's, we're, we're talking about eternity. We're talking about our whole eternity of either being with God or being away from God, of either helping people come to know him or falling into deceit and then deceiving other people into straying away from him. Like, this is a serious thing. We think about the love of God here. We could be leading people away from their, their God who loves them so dearly. And I'd hate to stand before him and then, and then him be like, hey, look, you led 45 people away from me because you, you fell into these teachings that have no roots in, my, in what I gave you, the apostles' doctrine and Jesus, everything I told them. It had nothing in there. And, and you led 45 people away from me, and now they're eternally separated. It's like it gets that real, you know what I'm saying? Um, mm. It's not something to, to lightly be taken. And I've seen people go astray, and it's, uh, it's a terrible thing. And then destruction often comes um, into their lives, and, and I, I hate to see it. Yeah. No, that's a, that's a really good answer. That's, um, that, that does actually clear some things up. I wrote down two of the verses that you included. Um, I, I wasn't too sure how much information or knowledge you did have on the SDA or Ellen G. White, but she said she doesn't claim to be a prophet, but from an outside perspective, it almost kind of looks like Ellen G. White to the SDA is like married to the Catholics. Mm. That's what it feels like to me from an outside perspective. But I did mention just before, um, I'll be. I'll just be pretty quick with this. Um, they put Ellen G. White's teachings and uh, texts, and basically her explanations of the Bible um, through a rigorous test. And from what I'm aware, all of it proved successful. And that's where it becomes a little bit strange to me. The Bible clearly says beware of false prophets, but the only prophets that we currently actually know of that are valid, real, and credible were in the Bible, in history. So that's where it gets a little bit strange to me. And it's also a matter of do I attend those churches or do I just seek God on my own with family, close by friends, and just share the news, you know? Yeah. Let, 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 let me pray for you and even many other people who are, uh, have the same kind of questions that you have or in, in it are kind of the same situation that you're in even now, you know, seeking truth. Um, so I'll pray. We'll pray for everyone. But just know that truly he who's in you is greater than he who's in the world. And you, you're a believer, right? You, from everything you're saying, it sounds like you're a believer in Jesus, right? 100%. Amen. Amen. So, so God will lead you if we'll stay open and humble and seeking him. Like, like God, I need your help. I can't do this alone. Like, help me do your will and not my will. If we're praying prayers like that, then we can rest assured that 
He's going to lead us, right? And if we're even taking, like, we're taking time to seek Him, right? We can't just go out on our journey through life and, like, never talk to God and never listen to God and never read the scriptures and all those things. But if we're doing those things to really seek Him and to really seek truth and things like that, then He will reveal Himself to us uh, and He'll help us to stay on the straight and narrow path. Uh, because truly, He is greater than the deceiver. The truth is, like, deception doesn't hold up at all. I'll, I'll tell you really quick, and that this will be encouraging to other people too. Uh, probably six and a half years ago, six and a half to seven years ago, the Lord gave me a vision, and I saw a circle of uh, basically of, if you could imagine, like, a dark army, right? So dark figures, couldn't see their faces, but dark figures with swords and uh, and shields and things like that, right? Satan's basically demons who are armored, right? And there, there's like this circle of them, like a bunch of them. And, uh, and I saw this like light shining in the middle and none of them was coming into the light. They were just standing around the light. And then what I saw, I saw like, a face, I believe it was the Lord's face, I saw a face that was like, uh, the facial expression was like um, like someone charging into battle, basically. If you can imagine that facial expression of someone like intensely charging into battle. And I saw this sword come out of the mouth, and the sword was so quick that before the enemy could even like make his sword move like a little bitty, just move even a centimeter over before any of the enemy had the time to do that with their sword and try to prepare themselves to fight back, the sword sliced through all of them in, mm-hmm. in a moment. And, and they, it was like they didn't even have time to do anything. It wasn't that they were frozen. It was this sword was so swift and so fast that it's just like, boom, just diced through all of them without even a moment for them to move. Um, so that was actually the Lord. And if, you th- if in Revelation it says the Lord's coming back and the sword is going right, to proceed from his mouth and he's going to slay his enemies. Uh, so then I saw that in Revelation like you know, later on. I don't know if I'd read that before, but the Lord reminded me of that verse of the sword proceeding from Jesus' mouth when he comes back. Um, but also it says the word of God is alive and active, sharper than any two-edged sword, right? Piercing even to the uh, division of the soul and spirit. Uh, and then we've got the armor of God, which says the word of God, which is the sword of the spirit, right? So the word of God is actually the sword of the spirit. And the word of God, another thing for that is the truth, right? Jesus is the word of God. Jesus is the truth. So basically the truth, man, is so much more powerful than deception and lies. That doesn't mean that we can just like kind of lackadaisically, lazily walk through life, you know, and not seek the truth. But when we do have the truth, nothing is going to be able to move us off of it as we truly keep our eyes fixed on Him. And we're like, as we do that, right, then, then we're not going to be moved. Even like the, the house that's built on a rock, the floods came and vehemently beat against it, but it wasn't even shaken, right? The Bible talks about don't be a man blown to and fro with every wind and wave of doctrine, right? So that means the truth is able to keep us from moving at all when these different false teachings and everything else come to us. So that, that's just a bit of like faith building and encouragement in the truth, but we still have to do our due diligence in seeking Him who is the truth and in doing that, He'll always give us exactly what we need. Um, and here in the Holy Spirit, the teacher, the teacher is going to teach us so we can interpret uh, exactly how God inspired everything that, that is in the Scripture. So let's, uh, let's pray real quick. What, what, what was your name? Lincoln. Lincoln. Father, I thank you for Lincoln. God, I thank you for everyone else, um, every Christian out there, every saint out there, And Lord, anyone else who is dealing with the same thing, maybe they've been raised a certain way and that's all they've been taught, that's all they know. But Lord, they're passionate about you. They love you. Um, And God, you are are so drawing them to you already. And as 
They all draw near to you as we all draw near to you, God. You promise to draw near to us. And Lord, you are not hiding yourself. You're not withholding anything from us. But God, you so desire to reveal the truth to us. And Lord, I thank you that your truth is powerful. Lord, your truth is what brings freedom. Whom the sun sets free is free indeed. So Lord, I thank you that you're instilling in your people the truth and that we will not be shaken and that you're going to tear down every stronghold that's been formed in each and every person's mind, every argument, every high thing, every thought, Lord, that's contrary to your word, that's contrary to you. Father, I thank you that you are able, that the weapons of our warfare are not carnal but mighty in God and that you're pulling down these strongholds and these fortresses and these wrong ways of thinking and these false teachings that many of us have heard growing up, many of us have been taught. God, I thank you that the truth is so much more powerful to tear those things down. And God, I pray that you'd make a mighty move in the earth even now, God, even as we're all joining in together praying. God, I pray that you would move mightily in the earth to tear down every false prophecy, every false teaching. God, all those deceptions, deceiving spirits, God, everything that's out there that's contrary to your word, God, I pray that there'd be a mighty sweeping all over the earth, all over the world to bring truth and that it would all be the Holy Spirit, uh, the Holy Spirit and the word of God just being made known so that, that people would just be able to laugh at false teachings. People would be able to laugh at deception uh, because it's, it's so weak compared to the truth. God, protect your people. Help us to abide in the truth. Help us to seek you with diligence, God. Help us to stay close to you, to stay near to you, to be sheep who are snuggling in close to the shepherd and we're walking close to you. And Lord, we thank you that you're our protector, you're our deliverer. And God, I ask you, Lord, we can't deliver ourselves from the evil one. But Lord, we ask you, deliver us from the evil one. Keep us. Help us not to be ignorant of the schemes of the devil. But Lord, help us. Uh, just to draw near to you, to love you and to love others and to finish our race well. And even as Paul said, if we hear any other gospel, no matter if it comes from an angel, if it comes from people that we've heard that preached good things at one point, God, if we hear any other gospel, any different version of the gospel, any twisted upness, anything, God, help us, Lord, to consider it accursed, to force that stuff out and if the people won't repent, then, Lord, to distance ourselves from all those people who are going astray. Lord, even to the point where Paul said, even if I, if I come to you and preach anything different than I already have, so, Lord, even people that we've looked up to, even people who've influenced us in a godly way, even people who have spoken into our lives and helped us through some of the roughest times, Lord, to continue in the faith, Lord, if those same people begin to bring a different version, God, I thank you that, we're, we're going to be able to discern. God, the anointing, the Holy Spirit is going to teach us and help us to discern between good and evil. And Lord, I thank you that we will not be deceived. Help us walk into the truth and to abide in the truth. In Jesus' name, bring freedom right now, God. Every lying spirit, every person that's been tormented by demons or demons have entered in through these false teachings, through this even false way of living, through these false actions, that these false traditions and commandments of men and these ways of living where people have submitted even out of ignorance. God, I pray that by your spirit, Lord, you'd throw every demon out. I bind every unclean spirit of deception right now in Jesus' name. Every tormenting spirit, every spirit of bondage, every spirit of fear, every spirit of even uh, people trying to, to gain their own salvation through works. God, all the deception, I bind every unclean spirit. I command you to go now in Jesus' name. Leave and do not return. In the mighty name of Jesus, Father, we thank you for the work of your Spirit, that you are all-powerful, almighty, all dominion, all authority. It belongs to you. We thank you for the mass freedom that's taking place right now in each and every person's heart. We praise you for it and we honor you. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Man, so glad thank you brought this up. So glad, man. The, the the Holy Spirit, man, I just see even how he's orchestrating. Um, and uh, 
and just bringing these things these things out. It's not a coincidence that that you came on and asked tonight, but God uh, God orchestrated this um, and and had you even ask because man, it's it's such a prevalent talk in my life right now. Um, uh, I'm, I'm just, I'm seeing it so much more and more in like talking to people and just, I'm seeing it a lot. Um, yeah. So anyway, so praise God, man. He's amazing. And, and I believe that he just um, set so many people free um, even now um, through our conversation and through the word and the truth and, and even that prayer. So thank you, God. Hallelujah. Freedom in Jesus' name. It's a beautiful thing. Hallelujah. All right, man. Appreciate you coming on, man. Uh, if you have any more questions, uh, feel free to reach out. Um, Will yeah, do. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Yeah, yeah. Have a blessed night. You too, man. All right. All right, I'm going to... John, can you hear me? Yeah. Okay, cool. All right, we're... Do you want to do uh, one more? Or do you want to try to do some speed rounds? Cause... Yeah, yeah. Let's, uh, let's try to do some speed rounds. Okay, so what? How much time? How much time do you want? Three minutes? Uh, because we got about we got over ten people with cameras on. So I mean, right. we're yeah, not able to get to all. Of them, but. Let's do let's do three minutes. I don't I don't know if we can we we probably can't put a timer up, but let's do three minutes, and then John, you can come in and uh, you can be the enforcer of the three minutes. <laughs> Dreams coming true. All right, one second. Let me pull up a timer. All right, give me one second to pull up a timer and uh, to talk to the people in line. Right, and uh, cool. I'll pull in the first person. So just talk with chat for a second. Sweet. I'm just reading some chat over here. Tasha over on Facebook, thanks for the thanks for the encouragement. All glory to him, to the King of Kings, and unto the glory of the Father in Jesus' name. Yes, Amen. The boring said Jesus is our only hope in these dark times. Jesus is our only hope. Indeed. Someone said, How is hatred ducking? Reese said, how is hatred the same as murder? Because God, God, it says that he judged, judges the intents of men's hearts. So what God is going to judge us based on is not only our works, but, but our hearts. That, that, that's why the Bible says someone can sell everything they have and give it to the poor, but if they have not love, it profits them nothing. So uh, in the same way, doesn't matter what we do. Uh, it matters about really the motives of our heart that's behind it. So if someone is really hating someone in their heart and they wish that they could kill them, God will judge those motives in their heart because they desired and they even wanted to carry out killing someone. So that's why even looking at someone and lusting after them in our heart, we've committed adultery in the heart. And when you hate someone, you're committing murder in your heart. Uh, even though you didn't carry out the action, you've done something in your heart by uh, by enticing that sin, uh, by enticing the temptation, committing the sin, uh, and even um, doing those things in, in our heart. So everything, man, everything's about the heart with God. All right, Nick, you ready? Yep. Okay, I told them they're going to come in and they're going to start off with their question right off the rip as soon as their cameras turn on, okay? Sweet. Sounds good. All right. I got a three minute timer and I'll just, I'll unmute and say time. Okay. Okay. First person coming in. Hello. Hey, hey. Hey, uh, my question is how do I see God in a period of fasting and prayer? Uh, the context is I'm going on uh, my first missions trip to Peru. Okay, how do you seek God in fasting and prayer? So, uh, like I talked about earlier, fasting isn't so much about like moving God and getting Him to do something, but fasting is more so about, uh, it's kind of like a furnace. When you put gold in a furnace, what happens is any of the impurities, they actually rise to the surface, 
and then those impurities can then be scraped off and the gold becomes more pure. So fasting is similar to that. There's this intense pressure that's put on you and when you continue to love and be full of peace and joy and things like that, that's what you're being tested in. Your heart's being tested. And when you start to see that impatience coming up and you start to see that, oh man, my joy might not be in the Lord. Maybe my joy was a little bit in food or my joy was in how my body felt. And now all these impurities are starting to rise to the surface. And when those impurities are revealed to you, then you're like, oh God, I didn't even know this was in my heart. Like, God, help Like help me. I repent, first off. I confess these things. I repent, Lord. Remove these things from my life. Grant me repentance. Help me to become more like you. Help me to love. And then prayer, that's where the prayer comes in. We That was a prayer. Now, as we're fasting, we're beginning to pray more because it's like, okay, God, I can't do this alone. I can't make it through this day alone. I feel weak. Give me some strength, Lord. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. So when you pair that fasting and the prayer together, this huge transformation begins to happen in your own heart. So then once you're done fasting, you're kind of at a new place. It's almost like working out. When you're done working out, now if you're bench pressing, okay, now you push yourself to the limit, you push past it, and now you've made it to a new, a new level, and now you're working from this level. Now you can't back, you can't backslide. Say you go into binging and eating a bunch of food and being lazy and not doing, not obeying God and just watching TVs and shows. Like you can decline, but but really fasting and growing, just like working out, like you can decline or running, you can decline. If you'll keep that and then you'll continue to seek Him and continue to obey Him and continue to love Him, then uh, then you'll continually grow um, in in that time of fasting and prayer. So um, just. Spend a lot of time with Him. Keep your focus on Him during the, the time of fasting and prayer. Um, and uh, it's like working out. Sometimes it's just like it's the, the suffering is there, but no pain, no gain. So, uh, so man, you'll, you'll grow, and you'll get to know Him more in the midst of that and begin to become more like Him, abound in love. That's the main thing is growing, growing in love, and in doing that, you're going to grow in faith as well. Um, but, yeah, thanks for, thanks for coming on, man. Great question. Thank you. And uh, if you could do a video on spiritual gifts in the future, I'd appreciate that. Yeah, yeah. If you haven't already. Yeah, yeah, uh, for, for sure. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. All right. You were right on the money. That was three minutes. So I'm pulling in the next one. Praise the Lord. Hey. Hey. Uh, I have a question if I can actually find any way. Enable your camera, please. Oh, sorry. That's okay. Oh, uh, Sweet. Wait, uh, something hot. Oh, you, you, you can go ahead and ask uh, and, then, and try to get your video at the same time, but if not, yeah. it's okay. You can just go ahead and ask. So... Uh, wait. Let me just. I'm nervous a bit. I'm an eight, uh, I'm a. I believe in Jesus Christ and in God, but my parents are atheists, and I was born in an atheist household, so it's not really easy. And I've been looking forward to being baptized, but they don't allow it. I don't know what to do. Yeah, man, cool, cool accent. Sounds like you're like from Ireland or something. No, I'm not from Ireland. I'm actually from Croatia. I just have a lot of accents. Oh, okay, gotcha. Um, yeah, so so just man, see, seek him out how you can. Um, he God sees your heart. Um, and I mean honestly, dude, you you can you can baptize yourself in the bathtub. Um. Just, just just to be for real, because you you can still do it as unto the Lord, and in the circumstances that you're in, um, you can just literally get in the bathtub and you can baptize yourself. And and uh, I mean, what you're doing, what baptism represents, you might you might already know a little bit about it, but basically you're you're dying with Christ and you're rising with Christ, and something spiritually is even taking place um, in that baptism. Um, but anyways, yeah, man, God God will honor that, even like I said, in your own bathtub, baptize yourself. Um, but yeah, man, just, just keep, keep seeking him, keep serving him. Uh, and this, this is only what you're in right now. It's only a season of your life. 
you know, so it's, it's not going to be like this forever. You're not going to be restricted kind of like, like this forever. Um, but it's just a season that you're in. So just continue to kind of persevere, uh, and, and just keep seeking him and keep loving him and keep growing in him. Um, and, and before you know it, you'll be out of this season. Um, but yeah, as far as, far as getting baptized, man, you can, you can do it yourself and, and God will be there and he'll still do the same thing that he does. Even if someone else was, was baptizing you, um, but anywho, is that is that helpful? Uh, yeah. Thank you, man. Right. Good stuff. Yeah, yeah. God bless you, man. Thank you. See you. See ya. You had 20 seconds left on that one, pulling in the next one. Hey, hey. Uh, it, it, it sounds like you're muted. It doesn't say you're muted, but but I don't have any audio coming through. Okay. I'm going to pull someone else in, and we'll get back to you, Lil Karma. Adrian. All right, here's the next one. Uh... Hey, it, it, it looks like you're still muted. There we Can go. Can you hear me? Yeah, I got you. Hey, it, it looks like you're still Hey, uh, all right. So um, my question is, uh, as a Christian, what are you allowed to watch in, like, media, TV shows? Yeah. Um, man, it, it comes down to the heart. I, I'll tell you what I, what I do. Um, we... I'm not going to get in like legalistic, but what it, what it really comes down to is uh, loving God with all of our heart, soul, mind, and strength, and loving our neighbor as he loved us. The Bible says if we'll do those two things, then we'll fulfill all of the law. We'll basically do everything that's righteous if we'll focus on that. So if I'm watching something that has nothing to do with loving God, it's not honoring God. It's not respectful towards God, but it's actually uh, disrespectful towards God, or it's blaspheming God, or if it's um, if it's glorifying sin, if it's making drinking look fun, if it's making sexual if immorality, if there are provocative women who are trying to there's like lust going on, trying to get you to sin and lust and all these things. If there's stuff like that, same thing with music, not just shows or movies, but same thing with music. If the music is is not loving towards God and it's not loving towards other people, if it's, you know, there's a lot of country songs out there that are like getting revenge at your ex, you know, your ex-girlfriend, your ex-boyfriend, whatever it is. Or like I said, if it's pushing any kind of sin, obviously sin is not loving God nor loving people. It's the opposite. Uh, sin is always the opposite of love. So if it's not loving him and it's not loving other people, then why like, why are we watching it? So it's it's not so much about what can I watch and what can't I watch, but it's like, if my heart really is to love him and love others, then why? Like, question in ourself, like, why would I watch this? Just for entertainment? Even though it's it's not right to be entertained by something that's, like, at enmity with God, something that's evil, something that's an enemy with him. Uh, and honestly, I'm not going to waste my time watching anything that's not Christian anyway. That's my personal thing because we only have a short amount of time on this earth. If you look at the Old Testament, it talks about just like a blade of grass, you know, like a like a flower comes up and then it's dead. It's like our lives on this earth. If we live to be eighty years old or shorter, uh, then it's like it's like our time here is so short. So why do I want to waste any time on something that has no eternal value? That's not helping me to know God more, to build my faith, to help me to grow in love. Like, why am I going to waste time watching something or listening to something that's not going to do either either of those things? It's Maybe it's not so necessarily sinful, but it's not fruitful in any way. And therefore, in a way, it's uh, it's kind of vain. It's kind of like to no purpose. And it's like, why why even watch it or why even listen to it? Um, yeah, yeah. But great, great question, man. All right, yeah, thanks. Yeah, yeah. Have a blessed uh, night. Love your video. Yeah, praise God. All glory to Him. 
Great question. Okay, is my mic working this time? Yeah, we got you. Okay. Um, so my question is about, let me pull it up here. Uh, uh, Exodus tw uh, chapter 20, verse 4 through 6. Uh, Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image or any likeness or of any anything that is in heaven above or that is on in the earth beneath or that is in the water under earth. Thou shalt not bow down the, thyself to them nor serve them, for I, the Lord, am a jealous God, visiting the, in, the, in, the iniquity of the fathers upon the children. Um, does that mean that I like to draw? Does that mean I can't draw like angels, for example, because I just think it's they're cool? Uh, or does it mean that I just can't draw them and pray to them? Yeah, well, I mean, in in the context of what it's saying, it's saying, uh, you shall not bow down to them nor serve them. So okay. I, I think that's the that's the main thing to to make those graven images and then to bow down to them and to serve them uh, in a sense that's like uh, idolatrous or like an excessive, even like uh, an excessive respect or honor or excessive veneration or like even an excessive love. Like, like the Bible says, you, you can't serve two masters. Like you can't love money and love God. Uh, and I even mm -hmm. had the Lord speak to me once and say, uh, don't love food. Like you can enjoy food and be satisfied by food, but when you cross the line and you begin to like love food, uh, even oftentimes more than him to where I'm like overeating or indulging and stuff like this, it's like, okay, now I've gotten in the place of I'm not, I'm loving this more than I love God. So with anything, uh, it's really about that. It's about, okay, am I, like you can be free to draw those things and, and things like that. Um, but it's kind of the heart behind it. Has it become, I'm pouring out my love upon these things. Uh, I'm bowing to these things. I'm now serving to these things. These things are now starting to control my life. It's taking up more time. I should be doing this for God's kingdom, but I'm sitting here drawing. It's like, we kind of got to weigh it here. Uh, and it comes down to, uh, if God's first and God's inspiring these things and he's got a purpose in these things, then, Hey man, let's, let's go. But again, you know, uh, yeah, I'll, I'll just leave it at that. The bowing and serving and the, the loving thing um, is, is when, when we cross the line. Like, for instance, in, the, in, the, in Solomon's temple, God gives them specific designs on creating these angels and creating, you know, there were the angels that hovered over the ark and creating the ark mm -hmm. and all the designs on the walls and, you know, the cherubim and all that stuff. So it's like God, uh, if it was sin just to create those things, then God wouldn't have told them to do that. But when it comes, the, the, the line is bowing, serving, loving, this like putting it as more important than God, uh, all that stuff is, is where, the, where we've crossed over uh, and we've gotten into disobeying this command right here. That helps a lot. I've just been really worried about that, like, I just didn't know for sure, and I, that helps me. Yeah, yeah. Praise God, man. Yeah, yeah. Thank you, man. Th thanks for calling in. Have a blessed night. You too, man. Hey, man. I've been waiting. I feel like somebody, no one's brought up the tattoo thing yet. Hey, it, it, it looks like you're still muted right now. Try be, muting. Try should, talking. It, it, it still shows that he's, that he's muted. Okay, I'm going to pull someone else and we'll work on it. Hey, I can, hello. I, hey, how's how's it going? It's going. How are you doing today, Nicholas? Yeah, I'm doing good. Thanks for asking. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I have a question. 
Yeah. My question is, I've heard a lot. I, I, I watch all your videos. I, I watch all your videos, and I'm just wondering, how can one person be assured of salvation? Because some people say if you say the sinner's prayer in church that you're saved, and then other people say um, that's not the way to do it. So I'm asking you, how is the correct way to get salvation from God? Yeah. Okay, so Romans, well, I'll take you to a scripture. Romans 10, 9, and 10. And it says, but what does it say? The word is near to you in your mouth and in your heart. That if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For with the heart one believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto repentance. For the scripture says, whoever believes on him will not be put to shame. And verse 10, 13 says, for whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Right? So it's something that we confess with our mouth and also believe in our heart. If we just confess something with our mouth and we really don't believe that Jesus is our Lord, that first he died for our sins and that he's our Lord, if we really don't believe that, then what we're saying doesn't matter. But if we truly believe it, it says the believing actually has to take place first and then we confess it, right? So with the heart, one believes unto righteousness. So just by believing in our heart, we're believing unto righteousness. And as it comes out of our mouth, the, the mouth confession is made unto salvation. And if that's true, if we truly are putting our faith and we're believing that in our heart, then we're going to begin to do works that are befitting repentance. Like, okay. like if we truly have faith, then the grace of God is going to begin to produce fruit through our life. If Jesus is really king, it's not just a prayer I pray and then a ticket to heaven and I'm going to go on living my own way. Truly, if he's my king, I'm submitting to him. I'm giving him authority over my life and not my will, your will be done. And I'm continuing in that. And then the, the fruits are going to show, right? The fruits are going to be there, not because I'm doing them, but because he's doing them in and through me. Like his righteousness is now is now flowing out of me. So if you, if someone has confess if someone has believed in their heart and they confess that with their mouth, then they're going to continue to obey the Lord. And then what's going to happen next? Then baptism is going to follow, right? They're going to get filled with the Holy Spirit, and they're going to continue. And then His will for their life is going to be done because they're trusting in Jesus, the vine, to produce through them the branch and to begin to bear fruit. Okay. Yeah. That's that's all I that's all I had. Amen. Praise God. Great, great question. Is that you? You it's, you you have yeah. you believed and confessed? Um no, I haven't. I I've, I've pretended to be a Christian. Yeah, yeah. I pretended to be a Christian. Well do do you want to do that right now? Sure. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We'll just we we're, we're just gonna do that same thing. So just say Okay. I confess I confess that you Jesus are Lord that you Jesus are Lord and I believe in my heart and I believe in my heart that God raised him from the dead that God raised him from the dead in Jesus name in Jesus name amen 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 now if you believe that in your heart which I believe you did, then the Bible says yes. from Scripture that you are saved. All your sins have been removed away from you. When God looks at you, He chooses to forget. He's not remembering any of your sins. And the Lord is now inside of you. And you're His. You're born again. You're a new person. He's got an amazing plan for your life. And He's going to help you to walk this thing out. Just continue to follow Him each and every day. Continue to seek Him. Just build your relationship with Him. Get to know the Father, how much He loves you, and seek Him for what He created you for. And then He's going to help you by the help of the Holy Spirit. Be filled with the Holy Spirit in Jesus' name. He's going to help you with the help of the Holy Spirit to fulfill all that He created you for. Yeah, yeah. Amen. Yeah. Just, just one more question. Where is the good place to start reading in the Bible? What book? 
Uh, I would start at the beginning of the New Testament in Matthew and just okay. and just read throughout uh, the, the rest of the Bible, starting from there. Okay. Thank you. That's, Thank you, Nicholas. Yes, sir. God bless you. Thank you, Lord. God bless. Thank you. Amen. Hallelujah. Hey, John, probably just a few more. Okay, you just tell me when. I'm going to keep pulling them until you say. Okay. Uh, Rexy, enable your camera and unmute, please. Hi. Hey, how's it going? Oh, Good. Uh, just wonder, uh, did you watch General Conference? And if you did, what was your favorite talk? Oh, I didn't. I didn't watch it to be honest with you. General yeah. conference is that? Is that like the uh, political stuff? Yeah, I don't. Like, or is, or like is that a, like a Christian conference? It's like a Christian conference, like a the general conference. I was like thinking, like on like certain days, like on sun on Saturdays and Sundays, like they like on like we have like a multiple uh, sessions where like the twelve apostles and the, the prophet talks. That they just announced more temples. Like there's gotcha. gonna be one, and uh, you know that. Uh, you know they just announced one uh, in Scotland. Yeah, well, well, and a what, couple more. What was your you favorite part? The, hmm. the canoe uh, talk story. Like he, uh, one of the twelve apostles talked about uh, this story with a like a canoe. Like you gotta keep going. Oh, nice. You just, like got like. In, like, like oh, he like tipped over and like he was super exhausted and like he was like told once he was like helped he was like told like to keep his momentum keep going it's easier to keep it's right. easier uh keep going if you keep that momentum going yeah so yeah so so, so you don't start getting shaky and then fall over you just keep going and yeah yeah that's awesome man i i, I like that too yeah yeah maybe maybe, maybe i'll have to check it out and speaking of of uh yeah perseverance continuing in the faith amen what do you what do you feel like god's plan is for your life hmm. not 100 percent sure but uh i think i am gonna go on a mission i am going to seminary church stuff yeah we needed okay can, can, can and, uh, i pray for you real quick okay yeah well, well, what's your name uh it's hiram Hiram, Father, I thank you for Hiram, but I thank you for his life. And Lord, I thank you uh, that you've created him um, even in your own image. And Lord, I thank you that you are just helping him uh, and you're shining through him. God, uh, I thank you for revealing all that you've created him for and God helping him to uh, just people will be amazed at all that you do in and through his life. God, help him to, to be so strong in the faith. God, even uh, I thank you for the childlike faith that you've already given him. May he keep that his whole life, that childlike faith. And may he see many signs, wonders, and miracles take place even through his hands. Lord, I thank you that in our weakness, your strength is made perfect. Lord, I thank you. That's a that's a even like a scripture that's going to be uh, like a, just a powerful scripture over his life. That in his weakness, God, your strength is being made perfect. I thank you for you being glorified in and through his life. In Jesus' name, Amen. 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 Thanks. For, hey, thanks for calling in. Okay. Uh, bye. It's nice See ya. Seeing you. you too. Hey Beth, how's it going? On. It looks like your mic your mic is still muted. Hi. Can you Hello. see me? Uh nope, but I can hear you. Oh, okay, I'll turn it again. There we go. I can Hello? see you now. Hello. Oh, great. Okay, got it. Uh my question is, do you have to love yourself in order to love me? Sorry, do you have to love yourself in order to what? Do you have to love yourself in order to love God and to love your neighbor? I can't hear you, though, but... Can, can, can you hear me right now? Um, I'm hearing two people at once. 
Okay, did did you mute whatever you were watching it on? Uh, I created a Discord account, but someone else was talking. Oh, let me okay. just... Huh. No, I, can, I think it's working now. Okay, okay, gotcha. Um, yeah, sorry. I would say more important than, than loving ourselves to be able to love God and love others, it's more important first to find out how much He loves you. And then from, from the place... Because the Bible says we love God because He first loved us. So it's not just about us first loving Him or first loving ourselves so we can love Him. First off, it's finding out how He first loved us. And then if the God who created the universe, if the one who set the stars and the sun and the moon and the earth and created every living thing, right? The one who alone is wise, the one who alone is good. If he says, I love you, then who are we to say that we shouldn't be loved? Who are we to say, I don't love myself as if we're more wise than God? Because if he chooses to love us, and if he says that we're worthy of his love, then that's the truth. Mm -hmm. So then from that place of us finding out how much he loves us and how wonderful his love is, that will then begin to transform the way that we even view ourselves, because he created us uh, fearfully and wonderfully, right? And he's got this amazing plan for our life. And when he starts to speak over us, even we're looking in the scriptures and just seeing his love, for us, and then even building our personal relationship and hearing him say how much he loves us, that's going to help us in turn, not only to begin to love ourselves, but also to love other people. So I would say more than anything, it's just seeking God and he does love you. That's already a fact. That's already truth. You and everyone else, he already does love us. It says that he demonstrated his love for us, that while we were yet sinners, which means anything you've done doesn't stop God from loving you. Any way you view mm -hmm. yourself doesn't stop God from loving you. While we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. So he didn't just say, I love you. He demonstrated it through the greatest action of love there is. There's no greater love than for one to lay down their life for their friends. So Jesus committed the greatest action of love for you already. He demonstrated it for you. He, God so loved the world you're not exempt or uh, from the world. That means he does love you. It's the truth. There's no lie that can ever say it. So now you just need to seek him in personal relationship or whoever this is. People need to seek him in personal relationship just to find out how much he loves us and what that love actually is and getting to know that. And then from that place, that's when it begins to overflow uh, in your heart and out of your heart um, to other people. Okay. Yeah. Yes, That's good he, to know. But no reading, read, read, reading the Bible daily and then just talking to God is going to help you so much. It's going to help. Mm -hmm. It's going to help. The enemy will try to lie to us. The, but the more we're in the word of God, the more we're going to know the truth. And the more we're going to be able to pinpoint by the help of the Holy Spirit every lie the devil's trying to overrun us with. So just make sure you're in the scriptures on a daily basis. Um, for the sake of getting to know God, not for the sake of checking it off a list, but for the sake of getting to know God and building your, your relationship with Him and spending some father-daughter time just hanging out with your, with your Heavenly Father because um, the Holy Spirit's here. You can hang out with Him. You can spend time with Him. He'll reveal His presence to you. He'll reveal the fruits of His Spirit, His love for you. He'll reveal that in such a personal way right where you're at. And He'll do it each and every day if you'll just make the decision to spend that time with him. Yeah. Okay, makes sense. Yeah. God bless you. Thank you so much for calling in. God bless you too. Yeah, Amen. thank you. Amen. Hallelujah. God is so beautiful. Whew. Receive that too. Anyone else out there wondering the same thing or struggling with loving yourself, receive that. In Jesus' name, thank you, Lord. His love is overflowing right now. Hey, look, 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 looks like your mic's still muted. All right, John. Uh, let's do one more after this. 
Copy. Hey, how, how's it going? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got you. I got video and audio. Okay, you can see me? Yeah. Okay. I cannot see you for some reason, but I wanted to ask if you could do the prayer that you did with that guy and you asked him to have Jesus come into his life. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah, so you believe with all your heart that Jesus is the Son of God? Yes, I do. Amen. Yeah, yeah. Well, let's, let, let's pray. <clears throat> okay. Just say, I confess... I confess that Jesus is Lord, that Jesus is Lord, and I believe in my heart, and I believe in my heart, that God raised him from the dead, that God raised him from the dead. God, forgive me, God, forgive me for all of my sins, for all of my sins. I turn away from sin, I turn away from sin, I give my whole life to you, I give my whole life to you. Help me. Help me. To do your will. To do your will. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Now, now, now I'm going to pray for you. Yeah. Father, All I right. thank you. I thank you, God, for my brother here. Lord, I thank you for your hand upon his life. Even now, God, you've been drawing him. You've been calling him. And Lord, now it's time... Uh, it's the, the, the reaping has taken place. So God, I thank you that he is your son in whom you are well pleased, not because of what he's done, but because of what Jesus has done. God, I thank you that all of his sins are removed. Every curse is broken. He no, he's no longer under the law of sin and death, nor any curse, generational, nothing like that. No demons have access to him any longer. No influence of the powers of evil in Jesus' name. Father, I thank you that he's just received the gift of righteousness. He's been justified just as if he had never sinned and he's done everything right his whole life. That's the gift that you've just given him. You've just robed him in your righteousness. So, Father, I thank you for it. And, Lord, I pray that you'd fill him right now completely with your spirit. Baptize him right now with the Holy Spirit in Jesus' name. God, help him to walk in your ways and your works all the days of his life. Father, I thank you for it. I praise you for it. Thank you that he's even sensing your peace right now. In Jesus' name. God, may he shine brightly for you. Light a fire in him that he would shine brightly for you. In Jesus' name, God, give him visions. Lord, give him visions, a seer. Yeah, God's going to use you. He's going to show you things. He's even going to reveal uh, future things through you. God's making you into a seer. In the Old Testament, that means a prophet. God's making you into a modern-day prophet for His name's sake. And it's going to start in the secret place. As you get to know Him personally uh, and build your relationship with Him, He's going to give you a keen uh, hearing and ability to hear His voice, His Spirit witnessing to your spirit. And He's going to begin to reveal mysteries, hidden truths about people's lives and even what is to come according to God's will for their lives. And just open your mouth in faith and begin to speak those things out because God is going to use you as an oracle and He's going to use your mouth and the Holy Spirit is going to be speaking through you to so many different people, bringing correction, bringing edification, bringing exhortation, building people up, bringing encouragement, and just bringing his word through your mouth, and he's going to destroy the works of the enemy. Where the enemy has tried to destroy you and cause harm in your life, uh, it's going to be even twofold uh, at coming at the enemy. Even more than that, it's going to be coming at the enemy, and the enemy is going to regret ever trying to lay a finger on you or those who are around you. It's going to be done by the Spirit of God in and through your life. You're an instrument in the Lord's hand. So let him play you well as a, as a person would play a guitar. Let him play you well. And he's going to do so many amazing things in and through your life. You've got to, uh, God's going to do amazing things, man. I see like powerful. Um, he's going to use you powerfully. Uh, just make sure the enemy in the same way would like to pervert and twist this thing up, that this will that God has for your life. So you need to draw near to God. Everyone does, but I'm just saying, you got to draw close to Him and draw near to Him. And you're going to go through a season, a short but very uh, intense season of God removing 
things from your life that don't need to be there. He's setting you apart in a, on a quick and fast uh, rate because he's got, uh, because his plan for your life is like, man, it is, it's like quick, it's coming quick and he's gonna move you very quickly. Uh, but that's like an intense thing and he's even prepared you through your past of, uh, of like intensity and like uh, just he's going to build your spiritual, uh, your faith quickly and your strength quickly in him. Uh, and it's going to be intense and it's going to be a lot of heat and a lot of pressure. Uh, but just continue steadfastly. Continue to trust him and rejoice even in that. Praise and worship, man, is going to be uh, your best friend in this, in this next intense season that you're going to go through. Uh, but you're going to see God do do amazing and wonderful things. Yeah, yeah. Thank you for it, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Thank you. I really Hallelujah. appreciate that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you, Lord. And, amen. and I also really want to quickly say, I like your videos. I've been watching you and a few other guys that's helped educate me how to speak about the Lord. Yeah, yeah. Amen. Man, hey, me send me some messages here and there in, in the in the next few months. I just want to hear mm -hmm. some some like of of the stuff God's doing in your life, uh, and okay. and uh, and yeah, just just shoot me every so so many months, uh, just shoot me a little message, uh, let me know who it is so, so I remember, mm -hmm. uh, and then and then sure. just shoot me some some updates, man. I'm really curious just to just to see what He's doing in your life. Okay, I will do that. Uh, yeah. where, which platform would you like me to do that? Um. Email is is when I would really see it. If you if you send okay. it to me, uh, maybe through either Facebook Messenger or my email contact at nicholasdebowling dot com. Either, okay, either I will do that. Those. Maybe Messenger. Messenger would be easier to to keep up with it. All yeah, right, yeah. we'll do, man. Thank you. All God right, bless. Yeah, yeah, have a blessed night. Bye, Nick. I got I got two more. Is that okay? Yeah, that's fine. Last two. Oh, that's me. You're seeing me twice now. Man, Holy Spirit was flowing on that last one. Praise God. Hey, we've got you pulled up. I can't hear anything yet if you're if you're talking. Looks like it's loading. Hey, got we got video now, but I don't uh looks like you're still muted. And it looks like maybe you're frozen too. Okay, I'm gonna pull in. Oh, there we go. Uh, no. it's it's kind of breaking out. Keep keep talking a little bit. Yeah, security in the on the modem, so I wasn't able to uh, go to the Discord. Um, inside, so I came out to my truck because my truck has Wi-Fi. Can you hear me gotcha. now? Yeah, 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 I got you now. Awesome. Okay, cool, cool. Um, yeah, so, uh, you know, I'm on the same path you are you know, as far as, you know, speaking, evangelizing, reading loss. Um, this I actually uh, speak for the first time uh, down here in Fort Myers. You know, and I have a heart for luck. Um, I was sixteen to a fifteen year prison sentence when Jesus Christ delivered me through a vision. Um, stopped me dead in my tracks, and uh, you know, just put the put the heart for loss. But I had a couple of things, and uh, one of them, I know you have to be, you have to be led by the Spirit. You know, and I, you, know, and I you know, I love what you're talking about earlier about. Yeah. Hey man, it, it it's breaking up a whole lot. So I'm hearing like we're just getting like a word every so many seconds. It's it's really hard to to keep following. All right. I'll... 
All right, I'll reset. I'll reset. Sorry about that. Come in on next. Come next week uh, when you're on Wi-Fi, and we'll we'll get you in for sure. Yeah, yeah. All, All right, bro. I just have act- it. I just acted my wife. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, j- just in case you watch this again, um, I I heard what you said that, that you're on a same similar path that God delivered you. I think through a vision, and He's got you going out, Fort Worth, evangelizing and things like that. Um, but God bless what He's doing in Jesus' name. And your Lord, if you desire Him to come back on, let it happen next week in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, Bill, you're on. You just have to turn on your camera, and you're good to go. Okay. Uh, yes. Hey, Bill, we 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 can hear you. Wait. Don't know. What is this? Wait. This found it. One second. Sweet. This. Oh, sorry about that. Oh, I had trouble it. finding it. Yeah, yeah that's it. That's okay. But, uh, but, uh, my question is, how do you protect yourself from physical and mental attacks? Because uh, I'm talking like physical, like, because I got physically attacked by like a spiritual being. Like, there was like nothing, nothing in the room with me, nothing in the room with me. But I got that punch in my face somehow. Yeah. So, first off, uh, su- submitting to Jesus, I-, I would say, you know, submitting to Jesus as your king. Uh, that that that'd be first step. Have you been uh, Have you been born again? Have you confessed Jesus as your Lord and believe that in your heart? Uh, yes. Amen. Amen. So that that'd be first step, and then second would be, um, the the more you spend time with God. Okay, the more you're going to get to know him, and the more you get to know him, the more you're going to trust him. And then, so as you're getting in these scriptures, and as you're building a relationship with him, you're going to see stuff like uh, the full armor of God, right? So you're going to start, the Bible says, with the shield of faith, above all, taking up the shield of faith, with which you'll be able to quench every fiery dart of the enemy. There are verses that say, uh, no evil will befall us, no plague will come near to us. There's a verse that says he's given us authority over unclean spirits and over every kind of sickness and every kind of disease. There's a verse that says he's given us authority to trample upon serpents, scorpions, over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means harm us. There's another verse that says he who's born of God does not sin. Whoever's born of God keeps himself, and the wicked one does not touch him. So when you start to realize all these verses, and there's so many more, there's a verse that says, Do not fear, for I am with you. Be not uh, disheartened, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. Yes, I will help you. I'll uphold you with my righteous right hand. So when you when you get these verses, right, then you start to put your trust in what God has inspired and what God has spoken. And then because of your faith now in Him, verses like, You're my strong tower. He's our, he's our refuge, right? He's our high tower. Uh, I'm hidden in Christ. All these things, you start to trust in that, and then because of your faith in that, then those things uh, are actually happening in and through your life. And then demons and things like that are not able to, uh, to mess with you because Jesus is protecting you, but also because you recognize your authority as a child of God, which means that you have authority over demons. You have authority over unclean spirits. They're subject to us as children of God. And when we give the command for demons to go and for demons to leave, then the Holy Spirit backs that command up and actually violently forces those demons and those unclean spirits out, right? But when we recognize the authority we have as children of God and the power of the Holy Spirit and we put our trust in Jesus in all those verses then one, we become now offensive. Our defensive is there, Jesus, and he's also the offensive, and he's now sending the enemy. The the enemy will come at you one way, and he'll flee before you seven is another verse. The enemy is now tucking tail, and he is now running. So anytime stuff like that happens, you can just command 
See, I command every demon or every unclean spirit, I command you to go in Jesus' name, and the Holy Spirit will make that very thing happen, but then also begin to quote those verses. Memorize some of those verses that I'm talking about. You can go back and watch this again and put it on repeat and find some of those and then Google where they're at in the Bible and then find them in the Bible, and then you can memorize them in here uh, and then speak those things even out loud, and it's going to build your faith and it's going to encourage you. And when your faith is there now, like basically the the outcome of our faith, the outcome of the promise, God is actually doing those very things. Let, let, let me pray for you real quick. Father, I thank you for Bill. God, I thank you for his life. I bind every unclean spirit that's coming against him that will try to attack him. And I command you to go now in Jesus' name. Do not lay a finger on him again. Go and do not return. You won't harm him in Jesus' name. Father, I thank you for protecting him, for keeping him in the mighty name of Jesus. Anoint him right now, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Yeah, yeah. God's with you, man. Don't don't fear. Do, do you have a Bible you can read? Oh, uh, no. No? Okay. Um, I want do, uh, do, do you Jake. have a church? Huh? Yeah, yeah. Do, do you have like a? Well, you got a, like a phone or tablet or something? Yeah, I got, I, yeah, I got a phone. Okay, you you can download a free Bible app. U version is a great one. It's called U version, the Holy Bible app. You can download it for free, uh, and you can even it's got like an audio Bible. It'll even read it to you. But it's better. It's usually better to read it. But download download a the one of those Bible apps, and then and then begin to read it, and it's gonna build your faith. Uh, in God, and uh, and you're going to exercise that authority, and you're going to trust in the Lord, and He's going to protect you so that nothing like that ever happens again. God is so much greater. He's so much greater than any demon. Demons believe in God, and they tremble in fear. They're so afraid of God. Uh, so, yeah, yeah. Man, th thanks for calling in. Continue to read the Word and, and just pray and trust in Him, and God is with you. Okay, and exercise authority. If anything like that have, tries to happen again, you have authority, and God is the one who's fighting for you. So you command uh, us. Uh, is, it, is it this one? Yep, yep, that looks right. Yep, it's that one. Uh, yeah, yeah, good stuff, bro. God hears you, so anytime you talk to God, He's hearing you, okay? All right, man. All right, bye. See you. All right, see you. Th th thanks for calling in. Yeah, we have authority as believers, and the Holy Spirit has the power. We have authority to exercise the power of God against all the powers of evil. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Just reading some comments over on YouTube. Hey, Frank, Frank Rodriguez, look up some verses about lust. You said lust free and fasted. Look up some verses about lust. If that's the temptation that you're, you're kind of struggling with, look up some, some verses about that. And when you're tempted, begin to speak out those, those Bible verses. Memorize them and then begin to speak them out of your mouth. That's exactly how Jesus overcame temptations in the desert. The devil tempted him, and then he said, it is written. Every time he was tempted, he said, it is written, and he quoted the truth in the true, uh, it, knowing what the truth was, not just a twist of scripture, but he knew what it meant. He had the understanding, and he said, it is written, and he spoke it out, and he overcame every single temptation. So memorize some truth based on those verses, based on that temptation, lust, and, uh, and begin to memorize it, speak it out, go over it in your head anytime you're tempted. And God is powerful. I don't know if you heard that vision earlier about the Word of God being uh, so much more powerful than any deceit or lies of the enemy. Um, but yeah, it'll, it'll help you tremendously. All right, well, 
I'm going to go ahead, AJ Shafe, you probably can't hear me, but I'm going to go ahead and... Uh, I'm going to go ahead and, uh, and call it for the evening. God bless you all. It's getting late. I got to get in bed. I got an early day tomorrow. Uh, man, it's been so good. We've had so many good questions. Um, man, God's been doing some amazing things. Hallelujah. Lord, we give you glory. We give you honor. We give you praise for all that you're doing in our lives and drawing us closer. In Jesus' name. If you haven't already, make sure to like, subscribe, hit that notification bell. If you're led to financially partner with us, you can do that through Kofi.com slash Nicholas Bowling. As well, if you'd like to get some ministry tools like what you see me wearing, you can find that at NicholasBowling.com. We've got a new design out as well. It's uh, quotations of Go and Sin No More. And then the one who quoted it, King Jesus, is on there as well. But God bless you all. Love you all. We're doing this every Tuesday, 6 p.m. Central Standard Time, the Lord willing. We're going to keep doing this kind of format, Q&A, um, some ministry type stuff. Um, love you guys. Man, great questions tonight. Um, I'm amazed at how the Lord is lining things up. But God bless you all, and I will catch you all sometime soon. Uh, we just released a video. If you haven't seen that already, we released a video. Uh, I think it was yesterday. But anyway, God bless you guys. And I'll see you guys soon.